NBC Sports presents the National Championship of American Golf, conducted by the United States Golf Association. Today, it's final round coverage of the 98th U.S. Open. Ordered by the mighty Pacific Ocean, only 15 miles southwest of the Golden Gate, lies 6,800 yards described as the longest short course in the world. The Olympic Club's Lake Course. It's at this historic layout under cloudy skies that this 98th U.S. Open Championship will be decided. Precision shot making, a premium. The punishing roughs await those who stray. The man who passes this demanding test earns his place with the greats of the game as America's national champion. The battle for this high honor began Thursday with Payne Stewart firing a best of the day 66. Birdies at 16, 17, and 18. The 41-year-old Stewart rumbled into the open lead. Round two, Friday. The 91 Open champion still smiling. His birdie, birdie, birdie start fortified his demeanor and his lead. Coming to 18, Stewart with a birdie putt to go five under and a three shot lead, but a seven footer became a roll away 25 footer and eventually a bogey. Stewart had enjoyed a lot of good breaks. This was Olympics payback. His lead reduced to one stroke after 36 holes. Yesterday, the combination of a good night's rest and a first hole eagle was sweet medicine as Stewart opened his round. Stewart refusing to surrender his lead. Tom Lehman's game has been good enough to be the 54 hole leader in the last three opens. 39 year old Minnesotan made a move late yesterday. This chip in at 14 en route to a 68 tied for round of the day. Bob Tway, the 38-year-old Oklahoman, player of the year in 1986 when he won the PGA Championship. Tway stayed in touch with the lead with some crisp iron play at 18. This approach set up a birdie and a tie for second with Lehman, four behind Stewart. Nick Price owns three majors, but the U.S. Open title has eluded him. Price has played solid golf here at Olympic, a 71 yesterday. He's five behind Stewart. Price tied with 93 Open champion Lee Jansen. Jansen moved into contention with a second round 66, but yesterday, too few birdies like this at 15. A 73 yesterday for the 33-year-old Floridian. And a look at the current leaderboard with uh, Stewart and Lehman last to tee off. That'll be about an hour and 45 minutes from now. And many of those who are in contention for this prestigious title yet to play. And some big names from around the world here to contend. Jeff Sloman and John Daly at plus seven. They're on the course. And there's Tiger Woods. If anyone could go very low, Tiger Woods might be the man he starts today at plus seven. Here are the final pairings at 12.05. Uh, Lee Porter and amateur Matt Kuchar. 12.14, Mark Carnevale. Tin Cup man, he calls himself. And Jim Furyk. Jeff Maggart. Stuart Sink at 12.23. Lee Jansen. Former champion and Steve Stricker at 12.32. Both of these men have won majors, Bob Tway and Nick Price. They go at it at 12.41 and the final pairing, Payne Stewart and Tom Lehman in the final pairing for the fourth consecutive year. And we welcome you to the Olympic Club with Johnny Miller. And Johnny, let's go back 25 years. And on that trophy, 1973, 
Oakmont Miller champion, and you were six shots behind going into that final round. Let's see, it was uh, Palmer and Julius Boros and John Schlee and Jerry Hurd that were tied for the lead that year. Uh, six shots back. You were really making plans for the next golfing stop, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah, I was. Um, it was very discouraging because I'd shot 76 the day before, and I had an inkling I was due for an open win, and uh, I thought, well, I guess I'm not going to get it this year. But, you know, I had a magical day. Great start, burning the first four holes, shooting 63 to win by one. You know, I look at this field today, and it's got the makings, the earmarks of a possibility where somebody that's back three, four, five over par could shoot something to match par. Uh, that could be the magical number today, 280. You know, there's only four guys that have shot under 280 in three U.S. Opens. And this is the fourth Open. There might only be one, maybe two more. You know, Simpson and Watson did it at uh, 300 and 200, and then two guys, Casper and Palmer, did it in 66 at 200. So Olympic Club par is an extremely good score to end up on. But it is, let in no mistake, it is it is really, you got to think of this thing right now as uh, Payne Stewart's championship to win at four shot lead is a huge lead if he can get off to a good start which he's done every day four under par on that first hole he's been magical on that first hole that start of his round one through six will sort of sh show what is really unfolding well in his record here at u.s opens uh, handling demanding courses look at this <clears throat> a minimum of 50 rounds and no one in the history of open play has a better average than Payne Stewart. Yeah, that is really amazing. That's some great play there. Really, to average 71.67, only win the championship once is almost surprising because you got Hale Irwin uh, not even on that list, and he has won it three times. So that's some great play by uh, Payne Stewart. And don't forget Olympics uh, tradition that the favorite, uh, the big name, has not won. Hogan lost to Fleck in 55. Uh, Palmer had a big lead and succumbed uh, as Billy Casper won in 66, and then Scott Simpson upset Tom Watson in 1987. And uh, further note, since they started playing 18 in the final day, mm -hmm. the leader going into the final round has won 12 times and has not won 21 times. So much could happen in the play today. A lot of pressure on Payne Stewart and really all the leaders today. It'll be interesting how they handle it. Let's go out to the par four seventh and Gary Koch. Thank you, Dick. Second shot here for Jeff Sluman at the 288 yard par four. Sluman on fire early, three birdies in his first six holes. And we are seeing birdies in bunches here at seven today. Front right hole location, very accessible. We'll go over to 13. And on the tee at this par three today, 199, Justin Leonard. Not having the championship he would have hoped. And Dan Hicks, this whole location today on 13 is exactly where the ball likes to end up. I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody make hole in one. Might even be one of our leaders, but you landed on the green there and it wants to end up right where that hole location is. It is back left, four off the left edge, and balls have been funneling back there all week long. Let's go to seven. Our defending champion, Ernie Els. Second shot here at the seventh. Else off to a poor start, four over par through six. But a well played shot and a chance for yet another birdie at seven. We go to 14. Par four playing 422 yards. Paul Azinger. Good round going for Zinger. I'll say, sure is. And you can look at his scorecard today. He starts at 14 over par. And he's now at plus 10, so four under round. He birdies one, two, five, seven, ten. 11. Fantastic. Bogey the last all 13, though. Now this whole location on uh, 14 is almost inaccessible unless you can hit a nice big cut shot, so that's a very good shot he hit right there. This is play today, the best rounds, and Azinger four under. Top of that Sunday leaderboard with Sluman, O'Meara, McCarran and Daly. Daly's all playing off to a well. great start, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's go to the fourth. Very difficult par four. Casey Martin from the rough, where we're going to see a lot of balls played from today below that fairway, which slopes so severely from left to right. And Casey from rough to rough. Playing the weekend, though, in an open, his very first U.S. Open, an historical one. To the seventh. Birdie putt now for Ernie Els down the hill very quick. Just get it started. Nicely done. Ells to 13 over par for the championship. Three over par in his final round. Stretch two through six, his undoing. 
moment before, this was Jeff Sluman. Chance to get to four under par through seven. And just slides by. Disappointing par for Sluman, but he remains at seven over for the championship. So we're seeing some good scoring early in this fourth and final round of the 98th United States Open Championship. Our leaders still a good hour and a half before they'll play. Our coverage will continue. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. Just after 11.15 on the West Coast, uh, our 15 minutes from now, it'll be Lee Jansen and Steve Stricker. Jansen shot 66 in his second round to battle into contention. Let's go out to action at 16, Gary Koch. And Dick here at the 609 yard par 5, 16th. Fred Couples with a chance for a birdie. And nicely done, moves Couples to one under par in his fourth round of this championship. We'll go back to 13. This is a birdie attempt for Justin Leonard at the par three. Not a bad line, just didn't quite hit it. Over to the second. David Duvall, second shot. Uphill, blind, can't see the putting surface. Good hole location here today. The right hand side over the bunkers. Oh, that's a well played shot. Greens are holding better. Well, they are right now, John, but the sun has finally peeked through and the breeze starting to pick up a little bit. It'll be interesting to see. We'll go to four. Third shot, Casey Martin. This a moment ago. The ball seems to be sitting up fairly good for Casey. Made history on Thursday. The first golfer to ride a cart in a national championship. And Casey would save par there to record his fourth straight par to begin this final round. He's at plus nine. And back at the second. Second shot for Phil Mickelson. Disappointing bogey six at number one. That's an eight iron up the hill. Well, I guess the greens are holding, John. That's, that's very easy. impressive. And that's an easy putt from there. Back to the par three, 15th, playing 151 yards today. What do you think of this whole location, uh, Gary? Tough, Johnny. Very tough. Woo! Not too <laughs> tough there, huh? Yeah, well, when you putt like O'Meara, I'm not <laughs> sure there is such a thing as a tough hole location. A couple of little knobs in the green that'll influence shots as they come in if you go right for the flag there. We go back to 14. This for par for Paul Azinger. It's a right edge putt. He remains four under for his round, plus 10 for the championship. Let's go to two. David Duvall lining up his putt for birdie, and John Schroeder's with this group. Yeah, they both kind of started off shaky, Gary. Uh, Phil Chili did his third shot at one and missed a short putt for par, and David didn't get it up and down, so this would really get the round started if he can make this. It's going to go a little left. Just lacked a little speed, probably would have held its line. Phil is uh, very positive right now. I spoke to him on the Phil Mickelson on the putting green. Uh, I heard to the grapevine through my friend Miller Barber that Phil went down and, and spent a couple days with Jackie Burke at Champions working on his putting. And the thing that I've noticed about his stroke is he's got the ball further forward in his stance, and his backstroke's a little shorter, and he's, he feels very confident putting now he's just a question of, he can't do what he did on the first hole obviously but uh, he, he could get it going today this putt's going to go a little to his right Difficult hole on the golf course. Moves to eight over. We'll go over to 15. The tee shot for Paul Azinger. Getting the hole measuring 151 yards. It's 145 yards to the front edge of the green. And you do not want to be short. 
Or right, huh? Or right. That's <laughs> exactly right, John. That's an eight iron for Zinger. There's a little pocket in there, isn't there? Yes, there really is. There's a brow right here, and then there's a brow over here to the left, and so the ball will work its way down in there if you can get in it. Let's go join Roger Malby. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Payne, our 54-hole leader, uh, you've been in this situation before. You led after all four rounds in 1991 at Hazeltine. Uh, uh, what's the game plan for today? Rog, it's the same as, as I've been doing all week. I, you know, you got to get the ball in the fairway off the tee and then hit a lot of greens. How are you feeling inside? I feel, well, of course I'm nervous, but if I wasn't nervous, I wouldn't be human. Go get them. Thanks. All right. Back to you. All right, thank you, Roger Moultby. One of the many tests offered here at the Olympic, it's sharp, sloping fairways. It's a key to victory today. With more, here's Ray Floyd with Dan Hicks. Thank you, Dick. And one of the distinguishing characteristics here at Olympic Club are the reverse bank fairways. Raymond and I are here in the fairway at the par 4 fourth. It has as much slope as any fairway out here. Dog leg to the left, but the slope extreme left to right. It is difficult just to keep it in this fairway. Uh, it certainly is, Dan. And because of this slope, only a handful of players hit this fairway yesterday. And I'm going to give you an example here. I just tossed that ball underhand. It, it's going to go right through into the rough, and this is where the balls land. So if you don't shape it or hook it up this hill, you've got no chance to keep it here in this fairway. And one of the reasons why this hole has played the second most difficult here at Olympic Club is because of this slope. So as the greens bake out, the fairways just as big a factor. A bigger factor because if you don't hit it in the fairways, it is very difficult to put it on the green down. Gary Koch has more on a player who has handled these extreme slopes as good as anyone in the field. Dan, that man would be Payne Stewart, and it's no accident why he's handling these awkward lies at Olympics so well. In order to prepare for this year's Open Championship, Stewart summoned his instructor Chuck Cook to Orlando last week for some practice. Now, rather than just hit balls off a flat practice tee, Cook suggested that they go out onto the Isleworth course and find side hill lies and hit shots from there. So from downhill lies, uphill lies, ball below his feet, ball above his feet, Payne worked on all of those, and the results have been very evident as with this great two-iron approach shot with the ball well below his feet that he hit into 17 in Thursday's opening round. Cook also had Stewart working on hitting fades, a shot that he had convinced Payne he needed to be able to play before he won the Open Championship in 1991, and a shot that they both felt would be very necessary to play well here at Olympic. So it's obvious that Payne Stewart has done the necessary homework. Now it'll be interesting to see if he can pass the final exam. Back to you, Dick. All right, Gary, you've met our tower announcers. Here are the men out on the course, Roger Maltby, Mark Rolfing, and John Schroeder. All pleased to be here in Daly City, California, southwest of San Francisco. Let's go out to John Daly at the fifth. Nice segue, Dick. John Daly for par. And he has struggled a bit since his opening round when he shot 69, two straight 75s. Interesting, Raymond Floyd, that he said that maybe he hit the ball best yesterday after one of those 75s. That happens. And you, it's just little teeny things that make your score go up. A few missed putts or a bad lie in the rough and your three or four shots differ uh, in a couple instances. And that's what U.S. Open Championship's all about. Well, as you arrive here at the Olympic Club, you, most of them, take John Daly Boulevard. John Daly was a rancher, dairy rancher, landowner, turn of the century and in fact in 1906 when the terrible earthquake hit San Francisco many folks sought refuge in this part of the Bay Area. And at the par 3 15th Paul Azinger for his seventh birdie of the day that should move a little right. Zinger five under par in the fourth round of this 98th <laughs> U.S. Open Championship and he's probably thinking why now? <laughs> Where were these earlier in the week? Wow. So it's Paul Azinger, five under par for the day, so there is some good scoring out there. The question will be, can some of our men just behind leader Payne Stewart produce one of those scores? We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Olympic Club. Uh, 
Preparing to tee off, Tiger Woods with Danish Ryder Cupper Tomas Bjorn. They're both at plus seven for the championship. It's a special day for all, but for these two men, it really is some Sunday. Roger? Thank you, Dick. Here with Matt Kuchar and Peter Kuchar. And first of all, happy Father's Day to you, Peter, and happy birthday to you, Matt. Uh, I understand it's a family affair this week. You've got your mom and grandparents out here, too. Yeah, thanks, Raj. We got everybody here. Grandparents, mom, relatives. Uh, we got a full house. It's a juggling act, but it's a lot of fun. Now, how are you going to get back to the insurance office after caddying out here in all these major championships? That's a really good question. Uh, if there's anybody out there in TV land that needs to buy some insurance, please call my 800 number because uh, Lord knows I need to sell some. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, with all your good play out here against the pros, are there any thoughts of uh, maybe not returning to college and uh, going for play for pay for full time now? Oh, there are thoughts of that, but uh, I'm enjoying college so much that I plan to return for another two years. Good for you. Good yeah. choice. Uh, Peter, there's been some criticism, some comments made this week about your enthusiasm involving cheering on your son, Matt. Any thoughts about that? You know, the last time I heard, this wasn't a funeral. <laughs> you know, but uh, if we're supposed to just keep a straight face and uh, not applaud good shots, then uh, maybe I'm not doing the right thing, Roger. Well, good luck to you today, and I know you both are going to have fun. I don't have to tell you to do that. Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Dick. All right, Roger, Kuchar turning 20 years of age today on Father's Day. Let's go out to 16. Birdie putt for Masters champion Marco Mira. Pretty much in the fall line It here. sure is. Coming back up the hill, maybe a little movement to the right. Oh, he rolls it nice, doesn't he? Well, he's got a beautiful stroke for uh, quick greens. Certainly we saw it on the 72nd hole of the Masters. <laughs> Well, the first tee here at Olympic Club. This is a par five, 533 yards. Ranks the easiest hole all week long. Well, it is the kind of hole you can drive it in the rough and then lay it up down on the flat uh, about 80, 90 yards from the hole location. But the players know that this tee shot right here might be the most important one on the whole golf course because it uh, sets up a birdie this is eagle 11, opportunity. 29 starting time from Orlando, Florida, Tiger Woods. Yesterday hit driving an eight iron to this hole, which is pretty mind boggling. 533 yards. barely keeping inside that uh, slope, going down all the way to the flat. Sokoborg, Denmark, Thomas Bjorn. Bjorn won two European events this year. He's 27. and come around and that's very easy to do right there right through the first cut we go to the finishing hole par four 347 yards Fred Couples second shot he's even par for his round today well he's eluded all the divots the balls all want to end up in that one little spot on 18 just a wedge front left hole location. You'll see a lot of balls spin off the right front and the left front, and that's exactly where you don't want to hit it right there. And no green to work with running away from you, and it'd be hard to keep it on the green. Back to five. And Casey Martin for the second hole in a row, trying to save par. And this difficult par four, and just like the fourth, another par for Casey Martin. Five straight to begin the final round. Matt Kuchar has had a lot of cheers and support this week, but so has Casey Martin playing in the Open for the first time. In the 98th U.S. Open, it is Payne Stewart who will take a four-shot lead on this final round. As we continue live from San Francisco, some of the other scores.
Third shot for Couples at 18. Very tough shot. Watch it almost pick up speed right here and funnel down to the front. Very fine shot right there. Wow. Couples best finish in an open tied for third behind Stewart in 91. They go to the first hole. Second shot. Tiger Woods. Mark Rolfing's there. You can see the hole location right there. You want to just land it on the front of the green if you can. And it'll take one hop back in there. He lands it short. It's a little bit wet right there. And leaves himself a long uh, pitch and run there. Club choice, Mark. Let's go to six. Just moments ago, John Daly, and now Daly for his birdie. Well, last two days he's hit it over 350 yards on this hole both times. He finally pulled out a driver for the first time yesterday. Hit some humongous drives. Just a moment ago at the par 3 8 Jack Nicholas birdie putt. Turning to his left. And Jack makes his second birdie in the last three holes. 12 over par for the championship. Go up to 18. And Couples trying to save his par. Oh, that tap in for Bogey. Finishes plus 17 for the championship. A final round 71 for Couples. And we move back to the par 5, 16. Third shot now for Paul Azinger. 128 yards. Probably just a good full pitching wedge. Coming in a little left of the flag. Oh, and holding nicely. Zinger will have that putt, a chance to get to six under par for the round. This moments ago. Bernie putt for Azinger. Chance to get to six under. No, that's right. That's right all the way. He would make that putt for par, and he would remain at five under. And if he were to birdie one of the last two, he could tie the lowest score ever shot here at Olympic. 64s by both Reeves and McBee in 1967, and also by. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. We were talking about the lowest scores ever shot here at the Olympic Club in 66. Reeves and McBee was 64. 1987, Keith Clearwater. Tom Watson shot 65. I believe that was in 1987. And then Arnold Palmer, Tim Simpson, Bob Eastwood, all with 66s. And of course, this week, Payne Stewart and Lee Jansen have added their names to that total. So the course does yield an occasional good score, but overall, not very easy. We go to six. Par four, Casey Martin. Boys putting today. He drained another. Martin, one under for his round. Eight over for the championship. To the opening hole there's been a ruling out there Mark Rolfing it's been a very lengthy delay Dick actually what happened was Tomas Bjorn played his second shot from the first intermediate cutter rough pulled it left and lost the ball it looked like it had just barely gone into the bushes he could not find it so Tiger Woods has now been waiting down here for about 10 minutes now you can see that shot he pulled and um, there is trouble left on this first hole at Olympic Club. It's no gimme and when you get going for the green even on two, you got to be really careful not to pull it. Even though it's pretty short rough over there, Johnny, obviously it just turned the toe of the club over and the ball went straight left. So he gets to try it again, huh, Mark? And uh, fifth shot right here. He has got it about 10 yards short of the green here. Going to play a little pitch and run. Real still hand action. You can see in that practice swing. Beautiful form. Feet close together. Ball off the back foot. See that ball is trailing to the right. The green runs away from the player there. Uh, players there, which I don't know if they, most of them know that, but uh, the second two-thirds of the screen actually run uh, back in this direction right here. So Bjorn has that sizable putt for bogey and Tiger Woods with a chance at eagle. 
You know, the one thing that uh, this, this delay helped him to do was give him some time to really look at this putt. He and uh, Mike Cowan have looked at it from every conceivable angle. And I believe even Thomas Bjorn's chip probably helped him a little bit. He saw how far right it went. This would really get this crowd electrified if he could get this one in. Good speed, huh, Mark? Hard to get it high enough on that one. Yeah, there's more fall in that direction I uh, telestrated on your screens than you can see. So Woods with a chance for birdie. Let's go to Roger. Thank you, Dick. Uh, Tom Lehman, uh, I understand your wife, Melissa, says she's rather, she's happy that you're behind <laughs> rather than being in the lead going to the last round. Uh, do you share her feelings? Well, it's a different position. and. Yeah, I definitely slept a lot better last night than I did have the last three years. Um, you know, four shots is a lot of shots to make up, but that's the kind of golf course where you can if you play well. And, and so I think it's a good place to be. Does it help you to be playing with the player you're chasing? I think it does. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, especially if I can get off to a good start. If I can get off to a good start and, uh, you know, maybe kind of get a shot or two knocked off that lead and make it more of a, uh, a closer match, and I think it'll be really to my benefit. What are the lessons you've learned the hard way the last three years that you have to put into practice today? Well, I think more than anything is I feel like I've beaten myself uh, the last three years where I've hit shots maybe too aggressively, tried to go for too much, and uh, have paid for it. And so, uh, you know, if I can get in a situation today where you know, I've got a chance to win, I think uh, you, know, you may see a more patient Tom Lehman, hopefully. Good luck to you. Yeah, one, one more thing, Roger. i got to make sure and say Happy Father's Day to my dad. I love you. Back to you, Dick. All right. Tom Lehman. University of Minnesota really wanted him as a golf coach about nine years ago when he failed to earn his card and thought maybe he had no chance with the big, big players. When they said he had to rent skis in the winter, he said, forget it, I'm going to go practice. <laughs> for birdie, Tiger Woods. Tomas Bjorn has holed his putt for a six already. Uh, good start for Tiger. Woods to plus six for the championship. Improving with each round, 74, then 72 in the second round, 71 yesterday. Let's go to the par four, 17, third shot for Paul Azinger. You can see a super open stance there. The pin location is front right, so he has to just barely get it out. Doesn't want to run it by the hole if he can help it, but uh, it's a pretty darn good shot and leaves himself a blazing downhill putt. Waiting for the leading pairs to play in this, the final round for the 98th U.S. Open Championship. The man to catch is Payne Stewart. He enjoys a four-shot advantage at the start. Watching the 98th U.S. Open on NBC Sports. Famed Alcatraz, The Rock in San Francisco Bay. Some of these great players have felt uh, they were in jail during <laughs> the course of their week here. Yeah, that's the real one there, though. And you can see the north and the south part of Lake Merced there, where all the putts seem to break towards. This is the seventh. This a putt for a double bogey six for John Daly at the short par four. Tried to drive the green, missed it. Had to hit it out of the bushes on in three. Whoops. Whoops. This is a pretty good putt right here. I like this one, Gary. Well, that's in for an eight. And uh, I'm afraid that the patience that Mr. Daly was displaying early in the week, perhaps uh, not quite there now. Good indication of just how that little seventh hole can play. We go to 17. This is the toughest of the Olympic Club uh, holes, and Azinger trying to part. Watch how fast this is. Just barely got it rolling, barely got it rolling. And that is the hardest hole location to make the already toughest 17th even harder. Let's go down to Roger Maltby. 
Thank you, Dick. Uh, with Nick Price, Nick, you're two over par, five shots back at the leader. Uh, can you be aggressive on this golf course and go after it, or does Payne have to make some mistakes for you to have a chance? Well, I think Payne has to make a couple of mistakes, you know. But, I, I mean, they, obviously, with the wind's down today and, and there's not much sun, so the greens are going to hold a little bit of their moisture. So maybe we'll be able to get a little more aggressive, but I'm sure the pin placements are going to be tough. And uh, it really depends on how Payne plays, because the way he's been in control the last three days, you know, if he makes a couple of bogeys early on, he's going to let a lot of people into the championship. But if he plays solidly like he has been, uh, it's going to be tough to catch him. Now, you've made no, no secret out of the fact that you want to win all four legs of the Grand Slam. Does that put extra pressure on you here at the U.S. Open? No, because I feel like, you know, I don't have anything to prove to anybody or, or myself. I feel like I'm going out there and, and just, you know, it's either first or nothing for me. So, uh, you know, a second or third place would be really nice, but it's not going to, you know, it's not going to cut the mustard for me. I, I want to go out there and win this championship. And, you know, I'm on the downside of my career. I've probably got another four or five years realistically left of playing against these guys. So, uh, you know, I really have to make uh, the most of today. Well, good luck to you today. Thanks, Roger. Dick, back to you. All right. Neighbor of Greg Norman at Hope Sound, Florida, as we go out to the second. Second shot for Tiger Woods, intermediate rough. Oh, up. Sounds like a flyer. He's saying come down. Flyer. And the frustrations continue for Tiger with the short irons. Go to 18. And Masters champion Mark O'Meara. Big sweeping putt here. That's the way to finish this round. A birdie for O'Meara and a 69 on this Sunday. 70, 76, 78, 69. Plus 13 for the championship. Payne Stewart seeks his second U.S. Open championship. He'll be teeing off within the hour. Azinger second shot at 18. He has the best round going on this Sunday. Four under. About 100 yards from there, and he's blown it by the hole, see if it creeps back down the hill, but uh, really had a great opportunity to get it inside of 10 feet. Still rolling. And uh, I don't think it's going to go much. It's early in the day. Um, as Nick Price said, there's still a little moisture in the grass. And you can see, coming off a of bogey at 17, and actually a very close, uh, easy birdie putt he missed at 16. So. This round could have been a 63-64 if everything went right the last three holes. Let's go to the second. This a moment ago, Tiger Woods' third shot. Now this ball will move right and pick up speed. Oh boy, that thing really came out fast. Woo. Surprised he had such a lofted club there? I'm very surprised, John. That's a little bit about what we were talking about yesterday. The younger players don't tend to get the ball on the ground as much when they're pitching the ball. Now live, and this is a big swinger from right to left with a lot of speed. What a momentum breaker this would be if he didn't make it, Gary, after birdie in the first. That seems to have been his tendency throughout the three rounds, Mark. He's made plenty of birdies, but uh, the mistakes seem to slow down the train. Good stroke. Oh. That putt looked like it was in all the way, Gary. It was a very good stroke, John, but that just, to me, a good indication of how difficult the greens are here at Olympic. Uh, you have to get the ball in the middle of the hole. You catch the edges, especially when the ball's coming downhill. It doesn't go. And you guys, uh, I think Tiger mirrored your feelings of how key that putt was to keep the momentum going and maybe do this magical day where everything went right for him. That was his mindset, wasn't it? You can just see how fired up he was and how disappointed that one didn't drop. Yeah. Bogey five. Drops him back to seven over par for the championship. 93 champion Lee Jansen getting ready. He and Steve Stricker playing shortly. Now let's go up to 18. Paul Azinger, last we uh, saw him there, had a chance for birdie and the round of the championship. 
Well, he had the fastest putt you could have at 17, and now he's got about the fastest one you can have here at 18. And it'll sort of feed down straight now. Now will start going left off the brow of that hill. It's a good looking putt. Yes! 65 for Azinger. That was amazing because that was picking up speed. That ball would have been probably 12, 15 feet below the hole. Good for you, Paul. Eight birdies today. So his putter came alive. One of the best ever rounds in U.S. <laughs> open play here at the Olympic. A 65 for the popular Paul Azinger. But at the top of the leaderboard, it's Payne Stewart, the only man who has better par here at the Olympic through three rounds. He enjoys a four-stroke advantage as he goes for a second U.S. Open title. today plus five for the championship little off key but certainly heartfelt <laughs> <laughs> there at uh, the first tee and now Kuchar starts his round you see a sliding hole to the right and want to just barely miss that tree there slide it around and he has done just that and that is a pretty good birthday start that's gonna leave him just a long iron into this par five with a chance for a birdie or who knows what Move to 15. And the par three today measuring 151 yards in length. Tee shot for Colin Montgomery. Montgomery finally getting it together a little bit. One under par in this final round. It's an eight iron and that is one of the better tee shots we've seen at 15. Montgomery off the disappointing 77 yesterday. We go to 18. And reigning British Open champion, Justin Leonard. Plus one today in his round. Just 100 yards away, lands it just where you want it. A wonderful shot. The leaders would like to have that. Plus 14 for the championship to three. Tiger Woods after the disappointing bogey at two. Trying to not drop another shot at three, that for par, but uh, after the opening birdie, two straight bogeys for Tiger Woods, and he drops to plus eight. We talk about the rough here being long this year. Look at 1955 off the 18th fairway. You can see some of those clumps were literally knee high for him. Took three slugs at it to get it back to the fairway there. And um, you talk about tough rough. This rough this week is uh, no problem compared to that. But it is thick. And let's go out to 18 this moments ago for birdie, Justin Leonard. Very fast, very fast. And we're gonna see that putt later today, I'm sure. And you can see how far by that went. That's farther than he started with. And you can see it's very slow. It's hard to go from the fastest putt you can imagine to the, one of the slowest. And he just straight in from there. Well done, Leonard with a 71 today. Finishes plus 14, currently 49. Let's go out to the opening hole and then the second shot of amateur Matt Kuchar. See the hole right there. Nice solid swing, good contact, nice divot. And uh, hits the down slope that should track on and probably to the back of the green, but a very good shot. A little unlucky maybe to hit the very down slope, but that's a good spot and he'll bounce off there and leave himself an eagle opportunity. Kuchar on his birthday, the uh, locker room staff presented him with a birthday cake this morning. Well, will it be Payne Stewart who lights the candles later this afternoon and celebrates his second U.S. Open championship? He has 18 holes to prove his worth. To seven. And here at the short par four. This a moment ago, David Duvall with a driver that can mean one thing only. He's going for the green. Come on. And he's made it. 
it's safely on, but the problem is putting from that upper level, virtually impossible to two putt. We'll go back to number one. And Matt Kuchar's third shot. From the collar. And uh, an eagle if he can uh, find it's some magic here. It's actually a very comfortable angle to be putting from because you are putting back up the hill. Uh, easier than where Tiger was from the front of the green. And the collar could be a little bit disconcerting, but I think he's okay. Not a lot of break here. Just a little bit should be to his left, but not much. Hold it a little, just was about a right edge putt. Got to tap in for a birdie start. That's a good birthday start. To plus four for the championship. What happens when you're against the collar, you sort of hit down on it. You have to hit down, otherwise the collar will catch your putter. When you hit down on it, it pops up. And then that first bounce, it can do almost anything when it lands. It can land and kick left, right, whatever, but uh, very nicely done to make his four, and he's happy. Meanwhile, at seven. David Duvall with his eagle putt after driving the green, but, <laughs> but as I mentioned, it's, it either goes in or it's going way by. Perhaps going for the green at seven today, not the wise choice with the front hole location. We'll go to number four. And Tiger Woods trying to save par, avoid his third bogey in a row. Early walk, early indication. He just never had a chance. So Tiger does record his third straight bogey and drops to plus nine. Well, Johnny Miller grew up as a junior on this course. Hundreds of rounds played. Here are some key holes on the front side. Third hole is a wonderful par three. You can see a long hole, 224 yards today with a slender green and crossing winds from left to right coming off the ocean. You can see heavily bunkered, a lot of rough, and this is the right side you're looking at right now and it's a tough spot over there. You do not want to miss it to the right. In yesterday's third round, Payne Stewart pushed his tee shot to the right, had a downhill lie, no chance, green going away from him, and that's one of his two bogeys on the front nine. The fourth hole, great par four, the hardest hole on the golf course for the members at 438 yards. You're coming through a shoot of trees here. Players will try to take a one iron, two iron, and hit the down slope here, and somehow keep it from shooting into the right rough. But if they can get it out there about 260 yards, that leaves them a mid iron a shot into this uphill approach with heavy winds left to right, heavy slope left to right. See the bunker short of the green and a lot of rough. Yesterday, Tom Lehman hit a pretty good tee shot, ran through the fairway, tried to hack it out to put it in perfect position, but watch, he catches the crosswalk, which is really trampled down, and the ball just exits straight right and runs into the rough. A bad break right here. After birdies the first three holes, it stops his momentum. The sixth hole, great par four, 437 yards. The only fairway bunker on the whole golf course is right here at 245 yards out. Just 23 yards wide there, it necks there, and then it widens out to 32 yards. Players will hit it out into the flat there and go into the green with a six, seven, eight iron. You can see the bunkers that are all around the green. Look at what happens if you miss the green. Colin Montgomery yesterday seems to have a simple little pitch shot, but this rough is so tangly and tough, he chunks it, leaves it short, and makes a double bogey. The seventh hole, the shortest par four on the golf course, just 288 yards. You can see players will hit it out there with a two iron, 24 yards wide, leaves them just a nice little sand wedge to the green. And this hole's got a lot of options, because if you watch this tee shot, a big three wood by John Daly, and he just smokes it, rifling it right at the pin. And look at this shot, hits right in front, rolls up through the tongue of the green. And Frank and Ernie says, you gotta be kidding me, what a shot. Eighth hole is a short par three, but look at the bunkering here. Trees hanging over the green, a lot of rough, a small green, a lot of tilt back to front, just 123 yards today. But yesterday, Payne Stewart's tee shot, he hit sort of a lean-in trap draw 
going right at the pin in the swirly wind. See it drawing in there and hits, sticks it right underneath the hole, two feet from the hole, makes birdie right there. What a shot. Front nine is a wonderful nine. It can be had if you get off to a good start, but two through six are really hard and you gotta take advantage of seven and eight. Now prior to this open, the uh, front nine played four over and the back four under. Pretty tough going out. Let's go out on the course. Jeff Sluman, this a moment ago, he's one of those having one of the best rounds of the championship. Chip in from behind 13 for a birdie two. Fifth birdie of the day for Sluman, and he's four under on his round today. Moves Jeff to plus six. Over to two. And the birdie putt for Lee Westwood. Been just five birdies here at the difficult second so far today, but there's the sixth, and that's a birdie birdie start for Westwood. And you can see that first pharaoh in the left part of your screen just taking a peek of it and how the whole golf course just falls down the hill. It's just a continual fall and the designer here decided to put almost all the holes north-south as you can see and of course the slope goes east-west and that is one of the reasons why this golf course even though it's 67, 97 the shortest on the open uh, uh, rotation is playing so hard. There's only uh, four guys in history of four opens now. We haven't, we're not counting this one, but just four guys that have shot under par for 72 holes. It's amazing. Today, the MetLife blimp Snoopy 2 is cruising above the skies over Olympic Club, providing our scenic shots. Since the first flight in 1987, the MetLife blimp Snoopy 1 and Snoopy 2 have logged over 700,000 miles, soaring across the U.S. and Canada, and that's pictorial. Uh, postcards to three. Very picturesque tee here. Lee Westwood from the high elevated tee down to the green. Again, the yardage 224. Again, Lee with a birdie birdie start, but in the bunker at the par three third. Over to two. Second shot here at the par four for Lee Porter. Bogey at number one, so not the start that Porter was looking for. Tough to get to this hole location, huh, Gary? It is, but we've seen some pretty good shots here, John. The green holding very nicely. That ball didn't even think about bouncing forward, did it? Just hit and came Certainly back. Did. Matt Kuchar next to play. Eight iron, Gary, looks like. I, I would think so, John. He's hit a good tee shot. Chokes down on almost all of his shots. You can notice that today. surprising for as tall as he is. Pretty long arms, so. though. Pretty good rhythm. Ball's left of the flag into the center of the green. That'll leave a long putt for a birdie. We'll go to five. And second shot for Tiger Woods, trying to get off this bogey train. He's got 173 to the hole. Hole location back left. A little difficult for Tiger to get at it. Well, he's put a little pressure on himself today, Dick. I think he knew he needed to shoot that low score, and he's put extra pressure, and he's not performing very well. Ahead to eight. And the birdie putt for Phil Mickelson. That's two in a row. Phil birdied seven, as did his playing partner, David Duvall. At the 13th birdie of the day that we've seen now. And it's Payne Stewart who will be approaching the first tee in about 20 more minutes. He currently holds that four-shot lead over Tom Lehman and Bob Tway. And we'll be back with full third round coverage, fourth round coverage in just a moment. Welcome back. We're at the first tee. And this is Steve Stricker. Strong player. Long hitter, huh, Gary? He really is, Johnny, and he's playing with a lot more confidence here in the last few months. And he did what you don't want to do, hit it in the primary cut left, and uh, then he'll have to lay it up. And from Orlando, Florida, the 1993 United States Open champion, Lee Jensen. Strong player and loves the adversity of the U.S. Open. He says, 
find out who's the best at overcoming adversity, that's usually the guy who can win here. Gallery likes it, but uh, both of those tee balls have not taken advantage of this possibly easy number one par five. And Lee Jansen is really struggling on this hole. Uh, made bogey yesterday. He's even par for this hole. And uh, you can see he's dropped four shots to guys like Nick Price and Payne Stewart. And uh, just got that opening drive. is a nerve-wracking experience. Some guys can handle it. Some guys don't. At the third, second shot for Lee Westwood. Again, a birdie-birdie start for him. Trying to get to that back left hole location, and we've uh -oh. seen a lot go into the mode area behind. That green goes away from you, Dan, and that can happen from those right bunkers. Back to two. Par putt now for U.S. Amateur Champion Matt Kuchar. And safely in, and Playing partner Lee Porter actually three putted for a second consecutive bogey, so perhaps he's uh, coming to the grips with where he is right now in the final round of the U.S. Open Championship. We go to five. Tiger Woods, his third shot at this par four, again from the rough. That will come up short. Look how quick that is from that side of the green, Dan. You're going to see a lot of balls over there go fast by. And back to three. Third shot for Lee Westwood. Putting up the mode surface. That will be the club of choice from down in there, Dan, today, I think, putting. So that left for bogey for Westwood after birding the first couple of holes. He had high hopes coming into this championship after winning his last two starts, leading money winner on the European Order of Merit. Good young rising star. Well, let's take a look at the yardage book here at uh, the famed Olympic Club. Just open this book right up and you can see the architects originally was it was Reed, but uh, Whiting came in and, and uh, redesigned it. And planted 30,000 trees, the ones we enjoy <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah that, that's what made the course. And then the Poana overseeded uh, tees with Poe Trivialis, and the, the main part of the rough is this rye grass. There is a little Poe in it, but then some bent, but mostly rye, and that's what makes it tough. To three. Par three, Matt Kuchar on the elevated tee. Matt with a birdie at one, par the second, plus four. Again, the hole back left today. He's hitting a five iron down. That's 224 yards back to that hole, but he's downhill. He's caught the left bunker. That'll be an easier shot than uh, than than Westwood had in front of him. Uh, we talked about the elevation change here. And looking down into the green from the tee. 64 feet below the teeing ground. That, for your information, uh, for our viewers, I think that's probably two clubs. And back to the first. <coughs> Adley Jansen in the rough. John Schroeder. He's got a pretty good lie. He has an option here to try to hit it down the fairway as far as he can, but 50 yards short of the green, there's a patch of rough that crosses the fairway that he doesn't want to hit it into. So he's got to be careful not to hit it too far. It's come out. <laughs> You can see it's a little more right than Kick he wanted. Left. Kick left. It's a pretty good spot. Uh, it's on a little flat there, and it's good angle to this back left hole location. To five. Tiger Woods for par. Trying to avoid his fourth straight bogey after the birdie start. Stops the bleeding for the moment, but plenty of challenging holes left here on the Olympic Club. Payne Stewart and Tom Lehman know that. They're in the final pairing in just about 10 minutes from now.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 1241 starting time from Zimbabwe, Nick Price. And Nick indicating he's going to go with his favorite oxymoron, play with cautious aggression. He's got the experience. A couple major championships behind in his belt, three of them. So he wants this one the worst, I would think, of the group. Give him three legs of the Grand Slam. Hitting the most greens in regulation. Another 41-year-old. Romero won the Masters at 41. Stewart's 41. Price, 41. Good position off the and tee. And from Edmond, Oklahoma, Bob Tway. Well, Quake Corner is two through six here on the front side, and only Tway of all the leading players has gone through there under par, one under. So he has uh, done well early in his rounds. And Tway has quietly gone about his business. Not a lot of limelight on him, and I'll tell you, he is in a nice position at uh, 211 uh, to, to have a good run here. He can shoot 67, 68, uh, could be his. Beautiful swinger, stylish player. See if it hangs in there, I don't think so. And threw away a little advantage here. And he finds the primary rough left side of this first fairway. Moments ago, up ahead at the first hole, third shot for Lee Jansen. Tough to interpret uh, the flight that it's going to come out of that kind of lie. It might come off a little bit warm and run through the green, but he plays for it, but it's still, you can see how much rolling away, but it leaves himself a very makeable putt. So a chance for birdie for Jansen. At 18, the man who won this U.S. Open Championship here 11 years ago, Scott Simpson for par. how quick that is just barely got it rolling and uh, leaves it down there where Justin Leonard hit it too and it's just a straight uphill putt from there that's where you want to be if there's some way you can get your second shot right there that's the perfect straight putt Simpson uh, unable to score a subpar round here this year Pushed it. Tough finish. 79 for Simpson. But he'll go home with pleasant memories of 11 years ago. Tough weekend for him. 78 79 finish. He was three under in 87 when he won the title here. Back at the first, and this is the birdie putt for Lee Jansen. It's actually exactly where you want to be if you're going to be 12 feet. Uh, this is just a right edge putt uphill. Uh, he, just, he did a few of those yesterday where he, he uh, took it back, stopped the handle, and gave it a right hand hit and pulled him to three. Matt Kuchar for his par. He found the bunker off the tee. Left to right. Not enough. Kuchar will suffer his first bogey and move to plus five, even on his round today. Back to two. Second shot for Stewart Sink. 129 yards up the hill. It's a nine iron, and it looks good. Oh, it is good. Sink will have that short putt. Potential birdie. Go to number one. John Schroeder's there. Steve uh, hit the, his third shot just right of the green in the in the in the secondary rough and chipped to this point across the green. It's about a six footer. Hard to read this putt, Johnny. Nerves are a problem right now. His wife told him to be a little slower putting with his stroke, slow down the cadence, and his main goal today is just to slow that stroke down. But he starts bogey at uh, the easiest hole here at the Olympic. That hurts right there. Set up with the poor tee shot. 
Well, the hard part of, of this hole, Johnny, if you miss the fairway, you can't really hit much more than a wedge, and then you've got a real long shot into this green. This is a hard green to hit when you're hitting a wedge, let alone a six <laughs> iron or five iron or three iron. Yeah. It's a very small green, so it's an easy hole if you hit it off the fairway off the tee, but you miss the fairway here, even down by the green, it's difficult, so. That was a very uh, nervous putt um, that Lee just hit, don't you think, John? That looked like he was really a little bit uh, too jazzed up. Just yanked it, went off in his hand. So through four rounds at the first hole, Jansen plays it even, so no gain there for Jansen, who is plus two, five behind Stewart. Let's go to Mark Rolfing. Well, a disastrous start for Bob Tway already, Dick. He drove his tee shot into the left-hand rough, as we saw. He tried to lay it back out in the fairway. The club just turned over, and the ball is still in the rough. He's going to have a good 200 yards for his third shot. Nick Price is in the fairway for his second shot. He's only got 235 yards. It's important to note that Nick Price has played this whole birdie, eagle, birdie. Yeah, it looks like he's going to continue that trend also with that great tee shot he hit off that bank right in the perfect position here. Not much wind, huh, Mark? Not much at all, Johnny. This should be a three iron. Actually, his club has a two on the bottom, but it is a three iron. You see a beautiful view from this second shot on number one. Those are the straights in front of Golden Gate Bridge. This one is just right of the flag. Good stuff, Mark. Good stuff on the green. That is a good, solid start for Price. And at the first tee, the final group awaits. Payne Stewart's father died 13 years ago at the age of 64. And there is his mother, B, representing the Stewart clan from Springfield, Missouri. He kidded about uh, whether or not he was resting well. He said, well, I'm with my mom. If she doesn't snore, I'll be, I'll be ready to go today. <laughs> That's got to be nerve-wracking for her, wouldn't you think? Mm. But his swing has got to be the silkiest smooth swing uh, besides Freddie Couples uh, since Sam Sneed. I mean, he's the only guy I know that swings like a practice swing. The ball's there. Usually guys have smooth practice swings, but when the ball gets there, all kinds of funny things happen, as you know, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> And then at leading the U.S. Open. So it'll be interesting to see at 41. Normally, the old rule of thumb is if you're leading at 41, things start to happen. But uh, we'll see if that is true today. On the right, the current USGA president, Buzz Taylor, with uh, Vice President Dr. Trey Holland. They have to be pleased with how uh, smoothly this uh, 98th Open Championship uh, has progressed. This is a moment, it must be forever as you wait for the announcement to be sent off. While they wait, let's go to seven. And Tiger Woods on the tee, not surprisingly, with the driver. <laughs> Uphill into the wind, and that is going right by his reaction. And that is not where you want to hit it, Hart. Not with that front right hole location. No. Back to one. Third shot from Bob Tway. All right, Bob. Trying to extricate himself from the rough and finally in the fairway in three. This par five going to be tough for Tway as he starts his round. Gentlemen, good luck. In the final pairing from Scottsdale, Arizona, Tom Lehman. But Minnesota claims Lehman, grew up there, high school quarterback. That graphic there is a very rare little graphic, I'll tell you that. That won't happen in this modern age of competitive golfers uh, to be in the last pairing four straight years. What a great seat he's had, if nothing else. Even if he never wins, he can tell his grandkids about it all. Bobby Jones, you have to go back that far to the legendary Jones for four in a row. And Jones came away with the trophy. This is an opening statement he wants to make right out of the blocks to show Payne Stewart. Uh oh, that's not a good noise when you're a gallery favorite and everybody goes, oh, that ball was way right and, and that's got to be way nervous. Florida, 
1991 United States Open champion, Payne Stewart. Mother V applauds Payne Stewart since age seven has idolized Jack Nicholas, and he has had three great starts in this championship. Well, let's see if the swing is still as silky and as smooth as ever. Uh, and uh, we're going to see the first six holes are going to determine a lot who's going to win this thing. Not much clapping going on there either. And another good reason. And we'll see if Payne Stewart stops right there where the people are. And if he does, he's got a pretty good shot into the green and another good break. It did not kick right down the hill like Tom Lehman's. Well, you earn your luck, but he certainly has a throughout the four days of competition, some tremendous breaks. That may be another. That is a good one right there, no doubt about it. At the first green, Nick Price trying to start his round with Eagle. He's got about 38 feet here. The players have not read enough break into this putt. It turns pretty hard to the right as it gets to the hole, and it's a pretty quick putt. He has not holed a lot of these this week. His ball striking has been tremendous. Not what you want to do, is it, Mark? No, it is not at all, Johnny. You throw away your advantage of two great shots. Meanwhile, at 18, Colin Montgomery completing his round. This for birdie. Watch these putts. Look at this putt. We're going to be seeing these in about four hours, and they're going to be pressure packed, so. That was quite the putt. That broke about two feet, perfect speed. And a 69 for Montgomery in his final round. Here at the short par for seventh, Tiger Woods second shot. Just 39 yards to the hole. Well, can he use the slope behind as a backstop? Yes, indeed. His drive actually turned out better than we thought, huh? It did, it hit the trees and actually went backwards a little bit, John, which was quite a good break. We go to one. This is Bob Tway's par putt. Slider to the right. Be quite a five. He makes that, but he does not. And uh, Mark Rolfing, a tough start there when you make uh, six on this opening hole, which is one of the few breather holes on this course. You just can't afford to drive it into the left rough, Johnny. You can play from the right rough, but not the left rough. So Tway falls to plus two. Five from Stewart's lead. In his wildest dreams, I didn't think he would envision a six on this opening hole. That's what the final day of the US Open can do to you, I think, Johnny. And one of the flash points of any professional golfer or a top golfer is when you hit a par five and two and three putt. You don't think equity is uh, striking out a very nice chord there. You figure you should get at least a birdie. So this is a pressure putt not only because of the U.S. Open, but because he feels like he deserves birdie here. We've actually seen very few putts from this part of the green. Not a lot of break here, actually. Maybe right center, huh? I wouldn't think any more than that. He needs to hit a little bit firmly. Pulled it all the way. Look like he pulled it to inside the left. And you see, uh, when you're nervous, putting is very much uh, an expression of how you're feeling. Roger Maltby. Payne Stewart got a good break off the tee here at one. He's in the, the area where the gallery has walked, but is not electing to go for the green. Has 279 yards to the hole. Just trying to lay the ball up down the fairway. Shot going down the left side. That should be okay. Should kick to the right. That'll be fine. Tom Lehman, on the other hand, has driven the ball well right over the hill to the right of the first fairway. Very near a large tree, but it has a pretty decent lie. He does have a gap 
to get the ball down the ferry, but he has to lay up. He only has about 250 yards to the hole, but uh, realistically no chance to reach it, so I'm sure he'll just be trying to put the ball down the same area that Payne Stewart's ball is. Really a pretty good break, Johnny. Uh, there's uh, a lot of places over here you wouldn't have this good a shot with this good an angle, but he can get this ball back in play. Uh, he asked Andy Martinez, his caddy, uh, what do you think, a seven iron? So I don't know if he means a punch seven because it wouldn't take much of a uh, club to get it down to where he wants to in the flat. So he's practicing sort of a half swing punch there, if that's any indication of what's going to happen now. A little tangly there on the toe area of the club, that grass. Oh, yeah. He's just his, just a half chip down the fairway. It should chase down in good position. Smart shot on. So this final pair of Payne Stewart and Tom Lehman out of the rough and will march up to their third shots at the opening hole and we move ahead one. Second hole, third shot, Lee Jansen. He hit his tee shot just in the, uh, the secondary rough. Uh, ball ran through the green and you've seen the result here. What happens when you miss a fairway? Move ahead to the short par four seventh. This is Tiger Woods putt for birdie. struggled from that length all week long. He continues to hit those putts very firmly. And we go quickly back to two, excuse me, back to one. And our final group with the leader, Payne Stewart, Tom Lehman trails by four shots in second place. Lee Jansen has fallen back to a three-way tie at plus two with Nick Price and Bob Tway. I was out this morning and it's just wonderful to be on this course with the spirit that it has and the patina that is created by the championship level of play here in the galleries, how it browns out the walking areas and, and just the whole whole feeling about the place is wonderful. In the crosswalks, it's, just, it's an expression of what's been happening, been happening and what will happen. So it's really a nice moment for me this morning out there. Johnny, we, we walked the course a week ago today and uh, with these sharp slopes, it, there are physical demands we really haven't addressed. I mean, coming down the stretch with the mental pressure and all the rest, uh, physically, this course uh, takes an ounce or two out of them, doesn't it? I think so, but uh, the main thing is the mental. It's just hole after hole, shot after shot, the men, the absolute precision premium shot. You can't get away with any loose shots, even so-so shots, and even some of the good ones don't turn out so good, and that's part of uh, what the USGA is creating with these courses set up like this is that uh, tests your insides, it tests your shot skills, and uh, how well you can, uh, you know, bounce back when things don't go well. So uh, when you win a U.S. Open, it's usually uh, you have to work at it. It's not just a walk in the park. I've never heard anybody say they had a walk in the park when they won. Tom Lehman from a perfect lie, 119 yards to the hole. Just a nice pitching wedge, level lie down in the bottom of a little valley. This shot short and right. Really a bit of a tentative uh, start here, John. Yeah, it's pretty nerve wracking experience sleeping on a chance to win an open, Roger. Here at the second, Lee Jansen, long putt for a par. Move quite a bit back to his right. That is certainly not the start that Jansen looking for. Par at one, bogey at two. We go back to one. Payne Stewart now 108 yards to the hole and in a bit of a burnt out area in the fairway. So he's a very tight lie. He should be able to get a lot of spin on this ball. This is a sand iron. Again, a nervous start. And those are not give me two putts either, Roger. And here at the second, Bob Tway's eyeing his problems, Mark. They don't look good. No, they sure don't. He put it in the primary rough on the left-hand side at the first. He's done the same thing with an iron here at the second. He's got 146 yards to the hole. It's not the worst lie I've seen all week. 
Certainly going to come out a little bit fiery, I would think, but he should be able to get a lot of club on it. If he can carry it up 20 or 30 yards short of the green, Gary, he might be able to chase it on. Very meticulous player, Tway. His pre-shot routine never changes. You'll see the caddy behind him. Always lining him up on this type of shot. Appear, appeared to come out very low, Mark. Came out low and it's gonna end up in that little swale just short of the green in the intermediate rough. Not too bad a spot. <laughs> Looks as though it may have just skipped into the primary rough. But we'll have a lot of green to work with. I mentioned before, Gary, that Nick Price started 4-3-4 at the first in the first three rounds. He has also played the second hole 4-3-4, so he's been off to a fast start every day. You see here, leading the championship in greens and regulation through three rounds, 71%. Uphill second shot from 146. He's asking for it to go, and it did. Safely into the center of the green. Back to the first. Payne Stewart from nearly 40 feet. This putt downhill and a bit of a double break. There's a bit of a muffin in the green on this left side that will affect the putt midway, throw it a little bit left, and then as it starts to lose speed, should go back to the right. And as you said, Johnny, not an easy two putt. You have to be very careful of your pace with this putt. And one expression of nerves or how well you can keep lagging you. So, see how good he does here. Now through three rounds, his speed on his putts has been very, very good. Really good. That left for his par. Let's go to Lee Jansen. Rough start for Jansen. Wants to try to get back on track here. Long par three, 224 the yardage. Hole playing very difficult today, Dan. There's only been half the players through here put their ball on the green and they're teeing it up. And Jansen finds another miss. More problems Did you that, see that dives into the deep rough. You can't believe it. Back to one. Tom Lehman's birdie putt. That's from about 25 feet. Back uphill slightly. And that muffin that affected Payne's putt will affect Tom's putt as well. It was send it a little bit from his left to right. But certainly the better of the two angles to putt from. Good stroke, Roger. Yeah, that was a good effort. For Payne Stewart, he can take some early comfort from the fact that the 15 players closest to him at the start, none is under par at the start of their rounds. Well, in spending time with these two fellows before the start of the round, I, I think Payne is probably a little more nervous of the two. A little bit different this morning, not quite as quick with a joke and a smile and a laugh. And understandably so, but uh, Tom seems extremely focused and Although his first few swings weren't his best, I think uh, he seems just a little bit better prepared to play this round. This would be a confidence booster if he can get it in. Par five for Stewart. To two. Third shot for Bob Tway. Pitching out of the primary rough. This is severely uphill. And comes up well short. Back to one. And Tom Lehman's par putt. This putt doesn't do too much. Probably just inside the hole on the right. But on the first hole of the last day, none of them are easy. Wow. It's 
surprising. So Stewart's lead grows to five as Lehman bogeys one. So par is a good score for the leader, Payne Stewart. Man, it's hard to believe what the top players on the leaderboard have been doing on this first hole and also even the second hole. Speaking of the top players, let's go to the second. And the birdie putt for Nick Price. That seems to be a little slower than the players perceive. Moving right. Coming up just short. Move ahead to three. Second shot for Lee Jansen from that thick rough. Does have some green to work with. He's got green, damn it. That was an ugly lie. And we're seeing a lot of bad shots from these last groups. There's a little nervous going on. Jansen. One over on his round today, back to two. And the tee shots, our final twosome at this 394 yard uphill par four. Five shot lead. Now the players have hit this fairway more than any other hole on the front nine, close to 69% have found the fairway, which does slope from right to left. This is a one iron going up the right center of the fairway, drawing slightly, should be perfect. Nice. Gary, who would have thought that both Tway and Lehman being in second place would bogey number one? Well, I don't think either one of them would have thought of John for sure. And up ahead at the green, Bob Tway missed his putt, so he's off to a bogey bogey start. Mm. And now Tom Lehman. Certainly a time to regroup. Hopefully put the missed putt out of your mind. This ball starts up the right, drawing back to the left center. See if it hops straight. Well, it takes a hard one left. No. no. And just rolls into the primary rough and mm. looks awful. Move to three. Opening up a sandwich big time. Lee Jansen, his third shot on this par three. Fast, fast shot coming here. Go in. Oh! Just off the edge. But that left for bogey for Lee Jansen, who has got off to a rocky start. A lot of the golfers here have, and they're Chase of Payne Stewart. Welcome back on a gorgeous day in the Bay Area in San Francisco. The cloud cover has moved out of the way for the moment. Bright sunshine on the Olympic Club for this 98th edition of the United States Open. Payne Stewart currently with a five shot lead as Tom Lehman has got off to a rough start, bogeying the opening hole, which was. A par five, and right now that final pairing is at the second hole. And Payne Stewart, after a perfect tee shot, right in the center of the green, you can see the putting surface well above the level of the fairway, and here's a good look at the animation of the hole. Fairway tilting severely from right to left, and then once in the fairway, the green sitting up some 30 feet above the level of that fairway, and the players cannot see the putting surface. Roger Malby's there. Payne Stewart has 153 yards to the hole, just on a little bit of an uphill slope. Perfect lie, but you do not want to miss right or long here. I'm sure he's looking left of the hole or into the center of the green. Wind slightly from right to left. This is a seven iron. Good looking shot. Ooh, another good break. Hits in the primary rough and jumps out onto the green. And now is ideal. We go to number three. On the tee at this long par three, Nick Price currently in a tie for second at plus two with Tom Lehman, but five shots behind Stewart. That's a six iron, Dan. Most of the players are hitting a five. Uh, another miss green. 
right bunker for Nick Price. Again, about half the players reaching the putting surface in regulation at three. Back to two. And Roger, how's the lie? Is it as bad as it looks? It's not very good. It is sitting down just in the primary rough, 139 yards to the hole, but there's a lot of grass to the left of his ball. And he suffers, uh, you know, he could have a chance of catching the club up and shooting it dead left here. Uh, at best, he can be hoping to somehow gouge it up onto the left side of the green. Certainly no opportunity to play at the hole. I think it's a hard swing out here. I, there's some ball that I can kind of catch somewhat cleanly, it looks like. Yeah. So this, this stuff is going to really grab me here. What will that do? Well, if I can get up to like left. Andy Martinez, yeah, that uh, wouldn't get that. of course, caddy right for there. me about 12 years, and he Try likes to talk it out. I'll tell you, sometimes I just tell Andy, say, Andy, thanks, uh, but I'm ready to hit. <laughs> but he's a very, very fine caddy. And a big asset to Tom. I want to play a little right here and almost play for a little bit of a pull shutdown of the face. He got this ball to come out pretty good if it'll get a little left. That is remarkable right there. That is a great golf shot. Takes a lot of strength to play that one. Let's take a look at this. I think he was aiming to the right. And he plays it back in a stance and he's very strong. Watch the grass come in and he'll catch some of the grass probably before he hits the ball. You can see how much grass lifted all the way to the edge of your screen and look at how long that path of uh, attack was. And that's very powerful when you can spread that divot out about 18 inches. We go to the third. Nick Price, greenside bunker off the tee here at the long par three, second shot. He's got a good lie here, ball below his feet. Plenty of green to work with. Wonderful shot there, Mark. Oh, it really is. Nick Price, the steadiest of the chasers on Payne Stewart so far. Nick Price has been there, done that. A couple of major championships in the same year, the last to do that. And since then, there have been 14 different major championship winners since. Back at the second green, Tom Wayman after that fabulous shot from the left rough. That's a long birdie putt. I would venture to say that not too many players in this field could have played that shot up onto this green. That took a lot of force from this putt. Now he does have an uphiller. For about 45 feet, should move a little bit from his left to right. And certainly, uh, after the shaky start with the putter in the first hole, I'm sure he'd like to get this up stone dead to the hole. Something he doesn't have to mark and just tap it in. Roger, on that first hole, uh, he said, and his caddy said, this is a straight in little putt. And I think that he might have goosed it just a little left, but I think it was a bit of a misread. That it had a little bit of left break on it, and that was just enough to spin it out of the hole. There's definitely more slope in this green than there is in the first. Slow, huh, Gary? Yes, it is, John. And you see him really taking his time trying to visualize the line. That is something that he's worked on with his instructor, Jim Flick, here just recently visualize the path the ball will take, not worrying so much about his stroke. Well, that is very nicely judged, good pace. Seven years since Payne Stewart won his first U.S. Open Championship. How did that victory impact his play since? Well, yeah, I, I let the being the national open champion affect me in a way of every time they introduced me, they introduced me as the United States Open champion. And all of a sudden I tried to live to a standard, you know, and and portray myself differently than I already was. And I'm, you know, I'm not that kind of person. And I, I was, I, I don't think I realized that I was already good. I was already the one of the best in the world at that time when I won the open. And so I tried to change to be better and it, it didn't work. 
I know when I went my open, it actually did just the opposite. It made me realize that, hey, I'm ready to be better than I thought I was, and I had my big year in 74, 5, and 6. But for Payne, maybe got a little bit of ahead of himself. One of the hardest things for players when they're at a certain level, a high level, when they try to take it to the next level, a lot of times they go the opposite direction. And Stewart has won only one title since. It's a makeable putt, Gary. It is. Very similar line to Layman's. Pill swinging just a little right. That was a pull, no doubt. Certainly appeared so. We'll go to number four. On the tee on this difficult par four, Nick Price, fairway dog legs to the left, slopes extremely severe, down to the right, tough to get it on the fairway, just 28% yesterday hit the fairway. You'll see that drift down to the right. Just tough to keep it in that fairway, Dan. Back to two. And Lehman safely in with his par. Remains at two over par for the championship and five behind our leader, Payne Stewart. We'll go back over to the fourth. Bob Tway now ready. Bob did par the third hole to break his bogey slide, but he is plus two on his round today, plus three on the championship, six back now of Payne Stewart. That's a look at that severe slope which the golfers face. That whole go golf course, as Johnny has stated many times during the telecast, it just runs down the hill to Lake Merced. You can see him setting up with the ball back to hook it to keep it up off the hill. This one's headed down the right-hand side, and it looks like he's hit it pretty far to me. That will drift right. Will that stay? No. But on the first cut, the intermediate cut. Now, there's that Lake Merced. This is the, the south lake of Lake Merced, and uh, again, the fall is going in this direction. A lot of people think it's over here, but it actually goes a little bit to the north East is the direction it, it, it the most of the land falls. We've uh, seen Payne Stewart's mother be here today, uh, cheering for her son. Reminds us that a couple of months ago at the Players Championship, Len Matisse's mother, Joyce, rooting him on. Uh, we regret to report that uh, Joyce passed away earlier this week, and we mm -hmm. send our condolences to Len and the entire Matisse family. On the tee at three, the leader, Payne Stewart. Again, the yardage, 224. And to hit a six iron that far, you'd say is crazy, but the downhill, uh, he's trying to put it on the front part of the green. How's that look, Roger? It's going at the hole. It's just a matter of what kind of bounce it gets, Raymond. Pretty good. I'm sure he'll be pleased with that up into the center of the green. Very good golf shot. Anywhere. On the putting surface at three is a good shot today. Again, golfers, uh, about half of them making it. Scenic tee shot, Golden Gate Bridge out there in the distance as we pull back. Just a gorgeous golf hole. Longest par three here at Olympic. Raymond, that's a hefty six iron, isn't it? Yeah, there. <laughs> they got it. We can't get it there, John. Forget it. A couple of them, maybe. <laughs> but. Uh, I'm sure Tom's going to hit a six iron as well. He's strong. He can hit it long. He's a stronger iron player than is Payne Stewart. And uh, the difficulty really in this shot with the whole location being on the left is the wind is coming from the left. And with the elevated tee, it's just exposed to that wind for so long trying to push it right. Isn't this a perfect shot for a little draw just aim in the middle of the green and hold it right in there? It is. And that's Tom Lehman's pet shot. He likes to move it right to left, predominantly right to left. How's that one look, Rod? He's trying to draw it back. It's going at the center of the green. Those are two good shots. Very good shot there. We've only had Roger uh, one birdie there since Jeff Sluman about three hours ago, so the hole's playing very difficult. Four birdies all day at the third. Ahead to the fourth, a rare birdie chance for Lee Jansen at the difficult fourth. 
You can see him play the break right to left. Will that be enough? Ho, ho, ho. Don't count out Lee Jansen. Tough start for him with two bogeys in his first three holes, but a birdie at the fourth gets him to plus three. He's within six. Second shot, Nick Price, par four fourth, cannot see the surface of the green. Whole location right there. And he looks like he's hit a good shot. And this baking of the golf course with the sun out, it's fast, making the ball run off the fairways and off the greens. Watch uh, this one. Raymond, don't you notice that the greens, though, uh, and the fairways are holding a little bit better than they were yesterday, uh, so far? It, so far, Johnny, but yeah. I think the sun being out the last couple hours, we're starting to see the ball move a little bit faster. Over at three, birdie putt for the leader. Bit of a tricky putt here, uh, Roger. It goes away from the player right there, but that's good speed. But you see how it just keeps tracking? There's an extra two or three feet of roll there. It's hard to see. Ahead to 18. And the man who won this championship last year at Congressional, Ernie Els for birdie. Very much like the putt that Colin Montgomery made earlier. But Els now has this for a par and a 76. Came here to San Francisco with a bad back, withdrew from Westchester a week ago, and just didn't play like the man we have seen win two U.S. Open titles. Back to three. Tom Lehman's birdie attempt, and uh, Roger, this one much more makeable than uh, Payne Stewart's. This is the angle on the green you want to play from, Dan. This is back up the slope. Might turn a little bit from his right to left, but a putt he can be more aggressive with than could Payne Stewart with his. That wasn't much of a putt there. I think Not he was very totally good. fooled. Not ahead to four. Bob Tway. This is his third shot. Short side at the green, downhill slope. Not bad. That left for par for Tway, who is currently at plus three. Six back of Stewart. And back to the third. Tom Lamon after uh, either being totally fooled or mishitting that now has a tough one left for par to try to avoid a second bogey in the first three holes. Yeah, this is not one of the tougher greens in the course, really. A tricky green, but there's not as much slope in, in this as some. Now this button may try to work, work a little bit from left to right, but I certainly think it would be inside the hole on the left. You hate to start saying that these putts are huge early, but I think this is very, very important right now. Oh, that was an all-around good one. That's going to help him. 360 for Lehman. Avoids the bogey. And another look at how close that came to looping out. Might have misread both those putts, huh, Roger? Of uh, Johnny, uh, certainly... Uh, he doesn't look real strong with the putter at this point. He's been not looking very comfortable with it. Now Stewart for his par. And the lead remains five over his playing competitor Lehman and five over Nick Price. We'll go to the fifth hole, par four, 457. This is a moment ago off the tee, Lee Jansen coming off the birdie at the fourth. And this is another one of those reverse bank holes that works the opposite of the previous hole at four. It wraps right around the fourth going the other direction. And that ball stayed up in the tree. And so now we uh, bring in John Schroeder live. Uh, John, how about a report on that? Well, this is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in golf. Uh, the ball, nobody saw the ball. They said it was up in a tree, but nobody could really see it. Lee was on his way back to the tee to hit a, hit, a, hit another ball for a lost ball, and all of a sudden the, the ball fell out of the tree. <laughs> so now he's hiking all the way back down the fairway. you got to be pretty happy about the whole thing. I well, think. I know, but if it had happened like two minutes later, he had already hit his tee shot, and it wouldn't have mattered anyway. He would have declared the ball out of play, so it's a heck of a break for him. And he... Well, let's go to 18. Well, here he comes, the Golden Bear. 
Forty second consecutive open, three times the champion. Four times the champion. Actually, with a noticeable limp, he has a bad hip, and uh, Gary Koch was noticing it on 16, and this hill at 18 is no bargain, and then even from the green up to the clubhouse is even, you almost need ropes, but... Uh, 10 years older than anyone else who uh, made the cut at 58, Nicholas. At four, coming way up the slope here, Nick Price, long birdie attempt. Well, that's a good looking putt. That's a long way off coming up there. And left it below the hole for his par. And back on the tee again, you can't say enough about the difficulty of landing in the fairway here at the fourth. Well, Payne draws the ball easily, and I'd say that this, this sets up maybe better for him than some of the other holes, or better for him than some of the other players, I should say. Might be, might be offline, guys. Uh, he pulled it. That is a very big oh, mistake. Oh, but he got a, it bounced back down. I'm not sure exactly where. It did come out of the trees, however. There is an anxious look, huh, guys. That'll make you chomp on the gum a little harder and faster. That is an, in a bad spot. Just lay it up and he smiles anyway. Up at the green at four. This would complete a nice... Par save for Tway. Oh, good putt. Look at the break in that putt. From where he was on the downslope in the rough, the save of four there is huge. Tway remains at plus three. Now Tom Lehman is on the tee at four. And this hole, uh, even though it's very difficult, plays to his strength here. He's got the draw. Let's see if he can get it in the fairway. You can see that hooking coming out of there. That's the shape you need. But here's where the adventure starts. Well, that's going to go through as well. At least he's on the intermediate cut. Up to the green, Nick Price trying to complete a nice two putt from the distance he was at. Yes. And Nick Price, very steady. All pars to begin his final round. Ahead to five, second shot from the rough for Jansen. That's been an adventure. Thinking he's lost the ball in the tree, it drops out, and now he's going to get his second out into the fairway. That, that was his second, John, correct? That is correct. That's not an easy layup, I'll tell you. It's, you're chipping or uh, punching it out a long rough to a fairway sloping away from you, so that was a good play. Well, let's bring in uh, Roger Malpe for a report on Payne Stewart's adventures at the fourth. Well, Payne badly pulled his iron off the tee, caught the trees on the left-hand side, and has dropped down into the rough into a terrible lie, but no more than 140 yards off the tee. He has no opportunity to reach the screen in two, and I don't know how far he can advance it up the fairway. The fairway is so steeply sloped from left to right, I don't think he can try to advance the ball up more than maybe 80 yards. Ahead to five, third for Lee Jansen. 177 yards. Wins right to left. Slightly helping. Getting a seven iron. Oh. Good shot. Just through the green. And back to the fourth. There's Payne Stewart. And Raymond, a lot of things racing through Payne Stewart's mind, even though he does have the five-shot lead, but in trouble here at four. Yes, Dan, I think now you, you're coming into the the patience, the mental part of this game. You've got to, he, he really needs to get this ball in the fairway, on the green, maybe a chance to make a par, but certainly no more than bogey. Going with a sandwich, Raymond. He's just trying to hit it where the players try to drive the ball into position. He'll still have 180 some odd yards left. Oh. It's too far, I think. That is fast, fast, fast. Look at these things roll. It stayed there. They say the greens are running 12 on the step meter. I wonder what the fairways are running, Raymond. <laughs> Boy, you don't want to get out there with the leather bottom shoes. Ahead to five on the tee is 
Nick Price, he has an iron, and again, this is a long par four, 457. The only longer par four is the Mammoth 17. One of the hardest driving holes you'll ever play in your life without water and out of bounds. You saw him cut it. It's the opposite oh, of four. You gotta shape it the other way to keep it on the fairway here. He's to the right. Oh wow, that's, boy, that's a good bounce there though, Raymond. That is, Mark. He's in the in the short clip, so he can uh, have a go at the green from there. And back to the fourth. Lehman now ready for his second. Roger. Has a good line, the intermediate cut of rough, and a good angle to play at this hole on the left side of the green. Has 198 yards to the hole, 174 to the front. I'm sure he's just going to be looking at trying to land the ball somewhere in the vicinity of the front edge of this green. And that graphic tells it all how difficult it is to reach the surface from here. Hole location's right there. This is a five iron. This ball going left to the hole. Oh, Roger. Uh oh. That's about the same spot where Bob Tway was able to save par, but that is tough. 18. And at 18, Jack Nicholas finishes with a bogey. Plus 15, a 75 today. But 11 years ago, he finished tied for 46 with Couples, Kite, and a guy named Maltby. He's tied for 46 this year at age 58. His son Michael caddying for him this week. A living legend in this game, Jack Nicholas. Shot Payne Stewart. 176 yards to the hole. This is a five iron. slick and it will break a good deal from right to left but Payne Stewart for the moment doing everything he has to do to win an open trying to show some patience now the fourth shot for Lee Jansen at five. Is he going to get Yo. another one? <laughs> and did you see the speed of that coming down there Dan? These greens are firming up getting faster. So Jansen stands at plus three for the championship six. Behind Payne Stewart, the leader, who enjoys a five-stroke advantage over Price and Lehman. And on this happy Father's Day, father and son complete their work here at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. Jack Nichols. Third shot, Tom Lehman from the deep rough at four. Boy, he hit it pretty hard. Drift a little closer, but that will be a very quick putt to try to save par for Lehman. Ahead at five, second shot for Nick Price. 211 to the hole. Hole cut today, back left. It's oh, a big hop, and can't tell from this point if it's in the bunker or in the rough. But now at four, this is Payne Stewart for par. Roger. This putt downhill very quick, moving from right to left. Tough putt. If there's such a thing as a good bogey, I'd say that's a good bogey, Roger. He would have taken five after he hit that tee shot, Raymond. You're right. So after three straight pars, a bogey for Stewart. At the short par for seventh. Matt Kuchar birdie putt. There we go. Should see the smile. 
Moves him back to seven over par for the championship. We'll go back to four. So Tom Lehman has a chance to gain a stroke on Payne Stewart, who's fallen back to two under with this par attempt, Roger, but very, very quick. Very quick, again, moving right to left. And you don't want to say at this point in the round, you know, you're to must-make situations, but certainly uh, an opportunity here to pick up a stroke on Payne. Is it enough? Yes. yes! You can see how quick that hill moves there. What a putt. So Great off. stuff. Hard earned par for Lehman and a bogey for Payne Stewart. And Tom Lehman moves to within four. And he's headed to a hole he does not like at all. More on that in a moment. At the fifth, this is the third shot for Nick Price. Dan, he wishes it ball that ended up in that bunker. It did not. It sort of scooted around the bunker. Got a very tough pitch here now. Plenty of green to work with, though, huh, Mark? He's got plenty of green to work with. He'd love to keep this one below the hole if he could, Johnny. Can he stand uh, level? I think he can, Raymond. He shouldn't have a problem with the stance. There's a big clump of grass right behind the ball, so he should have to take a pretty steep angle coming down at it. Like he got it clean. Oh, what a great shot, Mark. Nick Price continues to grind out pars, and that's what you have to do on the final Sunday. Back on the tee, we mentioned the par four fifth, a dog leg right with a severe slope to the left. Tom was asked yesterday in the press tank, he says, what holes give you the most problems? He said, well, if I could skip the fifth, I'd appreciate it and go right to the <laughs> sixth tee because getting the ball in that fairway, very, very hard, especially for Tom, who is a right to left player. Let's see what happens. The shark starts up the right side, drawing slightly. It's a good looking shot if it'll hold the fairway. First bounce was about 20 feet in the air and that's gonna chase right on through it looks. But I'd say that's a victory for Lane. That's a victory. Good shot. And there's a look at the hole, Raymond. The uh, dog leg right and then the severe slope to the left. Another one of those reverse banks. That one's 22 degrees. It's hard to keep a ball on, on that slope uh, unless it's cut up against it. And the wind's going that way, too. You got wind, hill, <laughs> you got everything. <laughs> the wind in this course don't match. That's why it's so tough. All these players are hitting irons. I think if the fairways were a little bit softer, little Johnny, bit. We'd, be si we'd be hitting some woods, see players hitting woods from out here. You would. That's a good shot. Payne Stewart safely in the fairway, but his lead has been whittled back to four just where it began the day as he continues his search for a second open title. Lehman and Price within four. Watching the 98th U.S. Open on NBC Sports. Welcome back to the edge of the Pacific Coast, southwest of San Francisco. Moments ago at the 14th, this birdie putt for Phil Mickelson. And the lefty birdie birdie at 13 and 14 moves to plus five and onto the front page, first page of the leaderboard. Go to five. Thank you, Dick. And the leaders in the midst of Quake Corner, as Ken Venturi so aptly named it. Very difficult stretch of holes, two through six. In fact, uh, the last three open champions here play the front nine and a combined plus four. The back in four under. Payne Stewart getting ready for his second at the fifth. Roger. Payne has 213 yards to the hole and a perfect angle with his ball on the right side of the fairway. Not easy to get the ball on the right side of the fairway here. Uh, As a five iron, just going to try to land this ball about at the front and uh, 
let it release on back. Yeah, he's got the best angle in there, Roger. Without question. Uh, he's got this ball working a little bit right. Needs a kick off the hillside on the right. Mm. Doesn't get it. Nestles in the rough. And we'll go to six. Par four, 437 yards. Second shot for Lee Jansen. See the hole right here. You oh. see the wind is freshening, Dick. It's downwind pretty heavily on six. It's gonna make the back nine, the back hole is a lot tougher. Second shot, laying it at five. This is seven iron from 194, trying to land the ball in the front right part of the green, let it run back to the left. Well, that's pretty good, Roger, considering, that's well played. considering only one out of three players are hitting this green today. Just get it on there is good. And considering how much Lehman hated this hole, <laughs> as he's made his feelings very clear through the week. Take the deep sigh. There are holes that you have conflict with and you have to find out a way to play those holes if you're going to be successful. 15. The second shot now for Phil Mickelson here at the par three. How about this shot? Well, this Big be brow right here. Right here in the green is a funny little right up there right to the top with that dry and down it goes. This is good touch. This is really good touch as you would expect from Mickelson. He'll have about seven feet left to save par. We'll go back to five. Well, all sorts of uh, different configurations for the trees here. Some 40,000 of them at the Olympic Club. And that one of the unique. It's a gnarly cypress, and there's probably 30 balls sitting right up in this area right here. <laughs> it becomes like a almost like a blanket, like grandma's blanket up there in pine needles, cypress needles. Might we find uh, one of yours there, Johnny, from the, uh, from the 60s, from the early days, collector's <laughs> ball. A title is K2A. <laughs> Just a gorgeous venue for an open championship. And the MetLife blimp capturing it all high above Olympic Club. And as usual, you can look to the skies for Snoopy and the MetLife blimp. Navigating at altitudes in excess of 6,000 feet. At times, it's had to lower down a little bit below the blanket of clouds this week, but not today. Plenty of blue skies. I think the blue skies, Dan, and a little breeze just starting to blow is going to make it more difficult as we get into the further holes. Well, welcome you who may just be joining us this 98th u.s open Payne stewart began the final round with a four shot lead it was five and six at one point it's been trimmed back to four nick price and tom layman four shots back each lee jansen did make par at the sixth hole so he is plus three through six for the championship but he is plus one in his round today now Payne stewart getting ready to play his third at the par four fifth, Raj. Has a very good line, 40 feet of green to work with. Uh, we've seen him play a lot of wonderful shots with this wedge around the green this week. Come on, come on, come on. Another marvelous shot, what a touch. He does have the whole package. Well, you can see he's got his lofted wedge. The ball's down in the ground. He makes it come up. It hits and releases and rolls right down the hill. Very, very good shot. In fact, it was Payne Stewart who described himself as more of a complete player these days than when he won his first open title back in 91. Ahead to six. Second shot for Nick Price from 127, just a pitching wedge, hit a beautiful tee shot here, left it up on the flat part of the fairway. Probably give it a go, huh? This green does not hold real well, especially downwind, so it'll be interesting to see if he keeps it a little left of the hole location and underneath the hole if possible. And that's just what he does underneath the hole, right in the fall line, putting straight uphill. Back at five, Tom Lehman. 
birdie opportunity. Just over 20 feet downhill, right to left, and very fast. Well, it's nice to make an easy two-putt par on a hole that you dislike. 15. And the par putt now for Phil Mickelson. Just to remain at three under for the round. No. Oh, whoa. Wowzer. That is just a lack of paying attention and concentration. Now he's got the same putt again. And now for double bogey. And we'll go up to 18. And Casey Martin, former Stanford player, teammate of Tiger Woods, making his way up 18. Very popular young player. Of course, it's the first time ever a card used in U.S. Open competition. He has a debilitating disease, does not get proper venous flow up that right leg, and that thereby the limp and his difficulty in maneuvering around the course on foot. Stewart for par at five. Yes. From the distance, you have to make a lot from in an open championship, and his lead remains four. Over Price and Lehman. 15. And this a moment ago, now for double. And that just sneaks in for Mickelson. Disappointing double bogey five. We'll go back up to 18. And Casey Martin surveying his third shot. He's plus 11 for the championship, two over today. Good round to finish up this championship. Got a tough little pitch shot here, but it is it is slow. He can land it on and stop it underneath the hole. He's gonna go with a big swing. He's going with a sort of a heroic shot. I'm not sure he needed to have that kind of uh, execution, but not bad. Tough, fast putt down the hill, though. He had somewhat of a historic uh, opening Nike uh, event after he won the court battle to use a card. He goes right out and wins that first event, and he qualified by winning a five-man playoff in Cincinnati to get into the Open. Let's go to the seventh. Here at the short par four, Lee Jansen preparing for his second shot. John Troder's with the group. He's put the ball in a great spot, Gary, on the left side of the fairway. Good angle to come in this flag, and this is a definite birdie opportunity. 83 yards. What wind there is right now is into the player's face. Little 10 backstop just behind the hole. Yeah. Players have really been taking advantage of this seventh. Should come back. Played shot by Jansen. He'll have that six footer left for a much needed birdie. He'll go to the sixth. Tom Lehman on the tee, and it's interesting to note that the final three twosomes thus far, only Jansen's birdie of the fourth, the only birdie on all those cards, and there have been nine bogeys thus far. It's an unusual hole for the Olympic Club because it's the lone fairway bunker you can see on the golf courses right here, 245. You do not want to try to carry it, though. It's rough, big rough over the top of it. You've got to keep it right of that bunker. So it's playing downwind. This is a three wood. It's looking at it a little anxiously. What do you got? Going right down the left center, John. Uh, he's probably a little concerned whether it'll hang in there, and it, I think it'll just be just okay. And it is. That's a perfect angle to come in from. There's the lone fairway bunker that's 245, and Lehman's ball is way down in this area here. In case you haven't been with us, even though they call this the lake course for Lake Merced, there's no water hazards, and that is the only fairway bunker here at 6,800 yards of test. Up on the green, Nick Price. Like I said, it's a perfect putt. Very straight, straight uphill. And uh, move just a little left, and he jammed it. Payne Stewart leading by four. This ball headed right. It's like Come he on. cleared too fast coming down, but 
Didn't get the hop that time, Roger, and that's gone down. People are clapping. I don't know what for, but... Stewart has played his last 38 holes in five over par, yet still has a four-shot lead. Now for part 18, Casey Martin. A little different putting angle that you don't see this putt very often. It's a double breaker. Went left and right, and that's a fine round. 72 to finish for Martin, plus 11 for the championship. Got to be pretty happy about that. That's good playing. 28 players now have finished their final round. The leader in the clubhouse, Jeff Sluman, a 68 today for Sluman, but he's at plus eight. Now, price for his sixth consecutive par to start his round. The one thing he did not want to do was hit it past the hole. He's done that, and he has a very fast putt coming back now. If he yeah. were to miss this, it could go six, seven feet by, Johnny. Well, he started at two over, and he's stuck on twos, and I guess he's hoping for a two putt. was the last player out without a bogey today and that changes at the sixth he goes to plus three his second three putt of the day three putt of the first hole for a par now lead Jansen at plus three and a very real chance Dick to improve on that uh, the seventh hole as we've talked about uh, shortest par four on the golf course is really playing easy today this front right hole location Players really taking advantage of it. We've seen 21 birdies. Better than a third of the field has made birdie on this hole. And this is a chance to get Jansen within four of our leader, Payne Stewart, and of course, Stewart in trouble at number six. Gary, this is one of the few putts I've seen out here today where you can actually be a little aggressive. He's going back uphill a little bit, although it is a left-breaking putt. The hole is above the ball, and the uh, I think he's just trying to get his line figured out, but I, you know, I, I think he really, really needs to think about it is he can be a little more aggressive with this putt. Nine. Nine. 33 for Jansen. Moves him to two over par for the championship. Even par in this final round. Good comeback for him. Don't you think that was huge, Gary? I thought it was very big, John. As easy as the hole's playing. Go back to the sixth. And Roger Maltby there. Uh, what's Payne Stewart have? Well, he doesn't have a good line this time. The ball has settled down. Uh, I don't know that he'll be able to get enough club on this to reach the green. I would think he's going to be trying to pitch down the slope to the valley below and give himself an uphill pitch. This is really important, Roger, that if he tries to put it down the gully, which we're talking about that's hidden right down there, that he's able to keep it uh, in the short grass because if he happened to push it or pull it and hang up on the down slope in the heavy rough, he's looking at a possible double bogey. Speaking of double bogey, he is uh, without a double bogey in his uh, entire competition here, and there have been 300 double bogeys carded. Want to favor the left side here, keep it left. You don't want to miss it right in the rough. Good play there, just where you want it to get a good angle to this back right hole location, as you can see. Tom Lehman now has 141 yards to the hole, and this is the perfect angle. First fairway he's hit today, hmm. and this is the perfect angle to play at this hole, John, as you mentioned earlier. This, if he could knock this close and get Payne thinking of a two-shot swing, uh, start putting a little heat on Payne, um, Things could change. Payne right now is in a nice little uh, noony comfort zone, and uh, somebody needs to rattle his cage a little bit. Noony comfort zone? Oh, you know, just weird words. <laughs> Olympic speak. <laughs> Has a 128 yards to the front edge, John. The wind is at the player's back, so I think this is going to be a a good firm wedge. Oh, yeah. Left of the hole. Good shot. There you go. Pretty straight putt up the hill. 
May not be noony, but it's 11:30, and <laughs> Payne Stewart with Tom Lehman applying some pressure. Stewart by four. Lehman happy about this par at four and is within four. Welcome back to final pairing, completing Quake Corner. Lehman already on the green. A little nervous pitch off a tight lie. And uh, not bad, really isn't. Leaves himself an uphill putt. That was just moments ago, and now live Tom Lehman for birdie. Roger. Just inside 15 feet, John back uphill. Should move just slightly to his right. Really make him. Gave a little right hand, Roger, at the bottom. We got a little sloppy right at impact. I hit to seven. Second shot for Bob Tway. Just under 70 yards, probably his L wedge. Should have plenty of spin. Oh, that's nicely done. Nicely done. Ahead at eight. T shot for Lee Jansen. This is an eight iron. Now that sounds like a lot of club. 123 up the hill. This front right hole location has proven to be pretty difficult. But a well played shot. Cut it off a little bit. A little left to right. Nicely done. We go back to six. Payne Stewart for his par. Just about seven feet as John said back uphill. We'll move a little bit right to left. Just a matter of matching your speed to the line you choose. If it's hit too soft, it can move rather hard across the hole. Roger, you got to be impressed with all the clutch putts he's made. 17, 18 yesterday. It looked like he could have leaked a little oil. And it came out today. He's made some good putts up and in on the last hole. And then this one would be really big. Great stuff. Over at seven. And Price, third shot. Drove it in the right rough. Second, short of the green, playing defensively. We'll go back to six. Tom Lehman, who came here with a chance for birdie and thought maybe Stewart would have some problems. Now he needs this for his par. So they leave the sixth hole with pars and Stewart a four shot advantage. We go to eight. And the birdie putt for Lee Jansen. This works right towards the lake. We've seen putts made from here, though, John. Didn't uh, hit us. No. That, that was. I think he's grinding on the line so much you forgot part two. It's a two part harmony, huh, Gary? Well, unfortunately, distance and direction are both very <laughs> important in this game, John. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Is, uh, he's got a little work left. This ball will definitely squirt right. Okay, well done. Good par. I'd say at this stage, every par is a good one. Back to seven, Nick Price, and he's safely in for his par, although that a disappointing one at the short par four seventh. He hit an iron into the right rough, Gary, and you just can't afford to do that at seven today. I said the second shot very defensive. He didn't want to put the ball up behind the hole on the middle terrace. I've seen very few players two putt from there. Well, Tway's got a shot at Gary dropping it down to two over. Yes, he does. Off to that shaky start, but uh, has come back with four consecutive pars. And now a birdie. On the tee, Tom Lehman. Just going up the right center. Needs to hold on. Oh, it just runs up against the intermediate cut of rough. It's amazing how much that ball kicked right, Roger, with a draw. 
Well, this fairway very firm, Johnny. All of them very firm right now and probably stepping faster than a lot of greens we've played. <laughs> I've probably got that about 20 degree cant uh, to the right and I guess that'll do it. Needs to go back to basics, huh, Roger? Fairways and greens here. You can't expect to get all these things up and in under pressure. Struggled three straight holes, four, five, and six. Got a shot going down the left center. Left side drawing, that should be ideal. That will, that will leave a much better angle to attack the flag than we go to nine. Lee Jansen off the tee at this 433-yard par four. How's it look, John Schroeder? Real good. He hit a three-wood right up the right side of the fairway. Hit just in the uh, first cutter off and right at the crest of the hill. Good shot. You see again the slope heavily right to left on the hole moving the opposite direction. Back to eight. Bob Tway coming off the birdie at seven will have the honor. Don't count this man out yet, Gary. I'll tell you what, I was out with him yesterday and he played very well coming in. Well, we talked about it too. Ideal temperament, Mark, for a U.S. Open. I mean, you just never see him get too excited and you never see him get too down. You know, when you watch his pre-shot routine, it is so elegant. It's, it kind of reminds me of an altar boy lighting a candle or something. <laughs> it, he just does everything so meticulously. Last guy that sort of went through all this was still playing the senior tour. David Graham had all the moves, sort of like Bob Tway. Getting word that this is a nine iron, and that is the popular club of choice here. 123 up the hill. up short, finds the primary rough, that's not good, not good. Back on the tee, he does not know whether that ball is on the green or in the rough. You can't see from all the way down here. The bunker, uh, as we were just looking there, there's about six yards of primary rough between the top of the bunker and But you, you, can, hear, you can hear from the gallery, it wasn't exactly stiff though. When they get the, the murmur, murmur and no applause. <laughs> we see here that the par threes have been Nick Price's downfall plus five. Hmm. Also a nine iron. He needs to hit a good shot here to get back on track. He's headed right and a little long. Safely on, but that leaves a ticklish downhill putt. One very difficult to be aggressive with. Tway moving off the tee walk up the hill toward the clubhouse. We'll go back over to the seventh. And the second shot for Payne Stewart. Well, again, a perfect angle, Gary. 61 yards to the hole. Of course, I would think that uh, the backboards would be probably what he would use here to bring the ball back to the hole, but he's got the angle to do it. Interesting. Well, John, we have seen players struggle from behind the hole. You know, that was a very poor break. We've seen him get a lot of bad breaks, but that right there, I mean, a lot of good breaks, but that right there, just what, a couple inches shorter, it's down stiff, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. If it just turns over one time, I think gravity would pull it down there. Now to the lawns of the Olympic Club here south of San Francisco. Lehman appears to have drawn a very tough lie for this shot. It is an awkward lie, Gary. The ball's sitting down a little bit right against the very first cut of rough and does not have as good an angle at the hole as Payne Stewart did. Uh, he's going to be coming in on a bit of a downslope if he tries to land it in the front of the green. He may have some difficulty here holding it on this first level from this angle. Comes up very soft. Ooh, I think he was just trying to play into the opening. Take a look at this shot up close. Watch how it comes down into it. It hits about an inch and a half behind it. That was a problem right there, and that took off a lot of the club head speed, made him come up short. We'll go to nine. Lee Jansen 
1993 U.S. Open champion, second shot. 140 yards, nine iron. Very dangerous hole location. If you go 12 feet left of the hole, you go down into a big, low chipping area. So the players know about that, and they're going to keep it to the right, I would think. Jansen safely on. He's plus two, four behind Stewart. Here at the eighth, this just a moment ago. Second shot for Bob Toy. A little lazy going through that one. Could have accelerated through the grass a little better. It'll be a testy little putt. Now live, burning putt down the hill. Mentioned before, Gary, that Nick Price had three putted twice already. He has struggled with the putter all week long. And this one is no bargain right here. It is very fast coming down this hill. Mark, interesting, uh, the early part of the week he was saying that, uh, you know, it's amazing. I have never putted well on Poena grass greens. I guess uh, growing up in Rhodesia, when it's now Zimbabwe, they had the Bermuda grass. It's gotta go, gotta go. Oh. Very tentative putt there, and that is certainly not what you want to do, leaving it above the hole. Back at seven. Here you see the slope from the middle tier down to the front tier. Well, so you got to just hit it about literally three inches over here, and then it'll just fall right down the hill. Yeah, John, that's what he wants to try to do, but I, I promise you I've not seen a player from this back tier stop the ball less than six feet past the hole. doesn't matter how easy they hit it. You can see where he's looking. He's looking way over in this uh, to the viewer left, the viewer left. And there it goes. You just can't stop it. Well, he's probably fi figuring, Gary, that's where his approach shot should have been. <laughs> well, it probably <laughs> should have been. And now a big putt for Bob Toy, four par. Got about seven feet pretty straight up the hill. Yes, sir, remains at two over par for the championship, just four behind Payne Stewart, our leader. up and down. And we look down at the small seventh green from above. Tom Lehman using the putter off the putting surface. And this should have a good swing from left to right and be pretty quick. Huge break. Boy, he has hit some putts. I don't know, John, whether they're misreads or, or just not striking them solidly, but missing badly. Now Nick Price for his par at eight. Oh, well hold, well hold. Par for Nick Price. Just one bogey and seven pars through eight holes. We go to nine. Lee Jansen, this is his birdie putt. Mm, what a great putt. John Schroeder? Yeah, uh, Lee and uh, Jansen and uh, Steve Stricker are a little out of position, so they're being timed, which I don't think will affect Lee's play, but you never know. They get 40 seconds each to play each shot, so they're speeding up their pace of play. Hopefully that won't affect his uh, shot making. Jansen makes the turn even at 35. David Fay, the executive director of the USGA, is with us. Uh, yes, when you're out of position, that means you're uh, playing over your time and uh, you're out of position in relation to the group ahead and uh, you have 40 seconds to play a shot. If you uh, get a bad time, you get a warning. And if you get another bad shot, a bad time, you get a one-stroke penalty. Hmm. Now for his par. Pretty much a straight putt, very little break, but it is slow. Oh, didn't hit it. Ooh, Johnny. Mm. Well, that's that surprising. Was a very tentative stroke. First one of those that he gave the little ad lofted impact. And a bogey five, that 
perhaps the easiest hole on the course today. Let's take a look at this thing. Maybe you can see how he sort of scoops under. See how the heel sort of goes under and the ball hopped on it. It did not roll smoothly and uh, a little surprising. Let's take a look at his eyes. See if he's his dad. One of the things his dad always told him is a uh, good tempo and keep your head still when you putt. Eyes might have might have leaked a little bit there, but. He's been making a lot of clutch putts. You're not going to make every one of them, are you, Gary? No, I don't care how good a putter you are. Not on greens that are this difficult. I mean, he has putted great. But uh, this, Tom Lehman, I don't think he expected to be maybe picking up a shot on this hole with a par. Certainly not where his approach shot ended up. Last hole could have been a two-shot swing, ended up nothing. And then this hole, he needs to make this. He don't want to go away without picking up a shot here. Straight in firm. Good stroke, good stroke. Uh, Lehman makes his par at number seven. Payne Stewart with a bogey. Stewart drops back to one under par for the championship. Gary, it's not looking like too many guys are going to shoot under uh, par this week. I'll be surprised if there are any, John. I know. Tom Watson said it, didn't he, the early part of the week? Over par will win. We go to nine. Tee shot of Bob Tway, three from the lead now. Plays downwind. You want to start it down the right side if you can, and it looks like it might be going left. Well, you know, it's going to the right. And uh, that is in the deep stuff and takes away a lot of opportunities here. And if you don't watch out, this hole you can make double because it's a tough little angle on the second shot layup. Tom Lehman, Payne Stewart, the final pairing. Moving to the eighth tee. Stewart, a couple of bogeys at four and seven. Lehman bogeyed one, picked up one shot. Back to nine. Nick Price. Swings the club like it's very light. Acted as if he didn't like it, and that's why. Oh, it popped up, though. Popped up. Very fortunate there, and a good angle. What a hole this is, huh, Gary? Oh, it's a beautiful setting, Dick. A huge amphitheater. You can see people lining the left side all on the hill behind the green side. Clubhouse behind that, people hanging off the top. And it is a little different look this time in the open. They have removed a couple of trees along the left side. You really had to play up. Yeah, used to the canopy used to be about right there, and then these trees used to have a bunch of uh, limbs on it. In the old days, it really only had about a 20-foot opening. Lehman with the honor. Again, the hole measuring 123 yards. It is considerably uphill. Front right hole location. It's playing longer than the yardage, huh, Gary? It is, uh, John, no question. Jansen hit a little, hit a little nice cut eight, iron. yeah, and it was a very well played shot. I would imagine this probably be nine, though, for Lehman. Roger, are you there? I am, and the wind helping the players, it feels, from the right. It does the opposite down on ground level than what it does above the trees, Roger. You just gotta ignore what's going on because the wind up here on high uh, above the trees is different than what's underneath. So if you watch that wind that you're feeling down at the tee, you can miss club here. And he does need to be careful. If he starts this ball too far to the right, playing his natural draw, that little tree yeah. on the corner yeah, could right, be in play. This right here, it'll nail That's him. exactly right. We've seen a couple of players hit it already. Is that solid? Yes, and it is a little long. Ooh, that is. I think he must have had the nine iron out first, uh, Roger and Gary, and probably went to the soft eight and nuked it a little. Actually, I think it was the difference between the wedge and the nine. He's a very yeah. strong iron player, John. He de lost the club a lot. So that's a big one then. Now, I think it's a very comfortable nine iron for Payne Stewart. And again, the flag at the green is showing that the wind is helping. It may be different than what's above, John, but uh, that's certainly the opinion that the players have, I believe. Well, that's probably what Bob Tway thought, huh, Gary? And that's why he came up short. Exactly. Remember yesterday, Tway, or excuse me, Stewart hit probably the best shot of the day here within a couple of feet of the flag. Played a draw yesterday. He won't be doing that today. That's a good looking shot here. Nicely done. Just passed hole high within 12 feet of the flag. And it's 
tightening up here in our final round of the 98th United States Open Championship. Payne Stewart's lead has been reduced to three. Welcome back, that magnificent amphitheater around the eighth green. Payne Stewart leading all the way in this 98th U.S. Open Championship. His advantage reduced to three over Lee Jansen, Bob Tway, and Tom Lehman. They're at eight. And Lehman will have a putt for a birdie, but it is a very fast putt. Yeah, this putt, as you say, Gary, quite fast, breaking to the right. But I did notice that his stride going to the eighth tee was a bit quicker than it had been earlier on. He really does need to hit a good putt, doesn't he, Roger? I mean, just for his confidence, <laughs> just has not hit many today. Nice to lag the ball down there close to where he could just tap it in. Keep coming, keep coming. He'll take that. We'll go to nine. Very difficult third shot for Bob Tway. Downhill lie, short of the green. Now it's over the green. Tway, who started bogey bogey, got a shot back at the seventh, but in trouble again here at nine. Well, Bob Tway had driven it in the right hand rough, but Nick Price put it in the left hand rough. He drew a very good lie over there, I thought, Johnny, but the uh, second shot did not fly like he thought it would. It came up just short. He's got a good lie here, though. Let's go back to eight. Payne Stewart. Taking his time. You know, Gary, the last 40 holes, Payne Stewart has played plus six, six over par. He apexed uh, at the 21st hole. At one point, he was actually seven under par for the championship. And then since that time, you know, he's been actually scrambling and uh, managing his game well, but he's been scrambling a lot. Well, he has indeed. You know, he made the eagle at the first hole yesterday and only one birdie since then. So. But will be moving to his left. Just a bit too much speed. Looked like he hit a good putt, just misread it maybe, and missed uh, there was speed and the line. I think a little softer, it may have turned more. We go to 10. Par 4, 422 yards, and Lee Jansen. That was for Birdie. Jansen plus two is three strokes behind the leader Payne Stewart. Hanging tough. At the ninth, fourth shot for Bob Tway. Sort of out of position. It's quick going this way. I don't know what kind of jump he comes off that face. Pretty good touch right there. But you can see the speed of that shot. Back at eight. Payne Stewart for his par. Safely in. One under for the championship. And marking his score and collecting his thoughts. Lehman now for his par. As well. They'll move to the par four ninth with Lehman still trailing Stewart by three. And the ninth is the sixth toughest toll through three rounds 37 birdies, 119 bogeys, 433 yards. And up at the green at nine, third shot for Nick Price. His par today, the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2 cruising above the Olympic Club in San Francisco to provide coverage of the U.S. Open. Blimp contains 70,000 cubic feet of helium and it measures 130 feet in length, nose to tail. Snoopy up there practicing his putting in his spare time and enjoying the view. What a scene it is! 
at the ninth, Tway. See how far that little pitch shot actually rolled back, and this one is exceptionally slow. Give him credit, Dickey's hanging in there. Bogey five for Tway, plus three, makes the turn in 37. Four from the leader, Payne Stewart, and we go to the tee at nine, and Tom Lehman. Well, this holds a contradiction to Tom Lehman's ball flight. You want to be able to hit a cut shot if you can, because the fairway slopes this way and the wind's going that way. Ball starting down the right, John is not turning. This is headed to the right rough. Well, this hole is a lot like number five for Tom Lehman. Does not, sparks are flying. His ball flight does not match. It's like putting a square peg in a round hole. It just isn't gonna work, but once every once in a while. So he pays the price for not having that cut shot in his bag. And Payne Stewart, uh, Roger, you said can cut it at will. He was working on it, Gary, you were saying he was working on it uh, last week. So it's a key shot right here. This hole, you can make a big number on this hole. Bob Tway darn near made double as you saw. He missed the fairway right here. Bad things can happen. Might be going left, I don't know. That is headed left. It looked like he released it a little early at the bottom. And that's gonna go in the primary cut and down it goes. So typical US Open. Nerves, execution, not quite like they are on Thursday through Saturday. Par 4 11th, 430 yards. Lee Jansen. Trails by three. Beautiful shot there. Very important tee shot on this uh, long 11th. So Payne Stewart trying to call upon the energies that led him to the championship seven years ago. Watching the 98th U.S. Open on NBC Sports. 48-story Transamerica building uh, on the skyline of San Francisco. We can report that Jansen and Stricker are back in position now and are off the clock as we join our final pair. Tom Lehman's tee shot must have caught the trees guarding the right side of this fairway and dropped down because he is well back, has 186 yards to the hole. Has a line, Johnny, that if he gets lucky with, if he can get this ball to jump, he could possibly reach the screen. Hit on the downslope on the right side of the fairway and get a good kick, he could do it. And he's done just that. It has jumped out of this rough. It's just a matter now how far it's going to go. What a golf shot. It's going to go down the chipping area, though. New little design feature here, and that'll run through. And actually, he's got a pretty good lie. It's on the upslope. It's very fair the way that was mown down there. And uh, it's actually a very good shot, but it got a hard bounce to the left. Watch this. Watch how he muscles it out. Watch how he gears up for impact. Look at this squat. Look at the leg drive. Ugh. That is some power there. But not a very good hop, Roger. No, that really hit hard, John. It's hard to believe a man could be winning the U.S. Open uh, only hitting half of the fairways. That's just amazing, but to get him a lot of credit in other areas. This is a bad lie from 155 yards trying to get this ball to hit on the downslope and go. I don't know if it'll get far enough. Oh, that's a beautiful. Oh, it does. That is really good. That's a shot of the day right there. That's it right there. That was a little bit serendipitous. Oh, Payne Stewart. One under for the championship, but a three-stroke lead in great position at nine. This is a tough 11th. Hit. Excellent drive, John. What's he got? Yeah, sorry, 154 yards hitting a seven iron. The wind's kind of kicked back up into him. He's pulled that. Oh, what a nice bounce. Oh, that's wow. out of the nice. That's out of the nice range there. That's oh, a miracle oh, oh. bounce. <laughs> Jansen just three behind Payne Stewart. And wow. A chance for birdie at 11. He's got to be thinking, thanks, man, I didn't expect that. A lot of good things are happening to Lee Jansen in the last hour, so 
Got to be feeling something's going on here. Only four rounds today under par. Azinger with a 65, best of the championship. Jeff Sluman, 68. Mark O'Meara, Colin Montgomery in with 69s. Back to 10 and Bob Tway. Mark? Bob Tway hit a huge slice off the 10th tee, but he hit it far enough right that he's where the galleries trampled the grass down. He's got a beautiful lie here. Not a very good angle, though. He should be able to get it on the green, though. He'll try to play this toward the center. Very smart shot. Very similar to a British Open shot. We have to land it 20 yards short and just let it chase on. Very calm demeanor on the outside. Nick Price now with 113, having saved a good par at nine. He really has not putted well at all. Mark, this whole location is almost impossible to get at. If you hit it right on the line, it'll kick left. So probably the best you could do here is about five feet left of the hole. He'll try and cut this one a little bit, Johnny, but he's pulled it way left. Yeah, he came right over the top of that, and there's another nice hop. So we're seeing lots of uh, friendly bounces at the moment. Bryce needs to uh, do some work on the back nine. He's plus four for the championship without a birdie in three rounds on the back nine. Back to nine. Very interpretive type shot. You got to run it up the hill. That's a good one. That's a real good one. That is really a good play there, John. A very steep slope. You'd have to be down there to appreciate that one. Uh, his head was below green level. You see how much up this bank he has to walk. And he's back off the stance. He picks it really clean, almost a groove low when he comes down. And uh, good shot, good technique. Uh, Tom Lehman will still be away, however, and on a very similar line to that of Payne Stewart, so. Roger, you were right there. How good a shot was that by Payne? I mean, was that just an amazing shot? Uh, it was, John, and the ball was sitting down quite deep. He did have a much better angle from the left side of the fairway than did Tom Lehman from the right, but he just, these fairways are so baked out, the ball just hit so hard and trickled up this hill. It's just, uh, I'll give him 20 balls. He can't do it again. Let's put it that way. It's one of those. But a fabulous golf shot. The rough, Roger, is, is pretty long, but it's not nearly as thick as it was early in the week when it was wet. Don't you agree? It has dried out, and it has wilted some. And, of course, certainly the left side of this fairway with all the traffic that it's received, all the balls that have been in there and players that have been in there this week, that is a little trampled down and certainly not as mean as it was, as you say, early on. Yeah, we wouldn't have, you know, on Monday, if somebody would have said, Roger, you could hit it from where Tom Lehman was and actually hit it past the hole, you'd have said, forget it. No way. <laughs> That's exactly right. This putt now uphill, moving a little bit to the left. It's not a hard putt, right? No, it's not. Big exchange going on right here. Too much speed, Roger. Just powered it through the break. Be a two shot swing. Meanwhile, at 11, Lee Jansen studying this putt. Let's take a look at this second shot that I'm sure he was not happy with, and it hits way up on the bank, 12 feet up into the high grass and just ricochets straight right. And now he's got a miracle birdie attempt. <laughs> Ever since his ball uh, from Rocky the squirrel came down on five and he chipped it in. Everything's been going correct for Lee Jansen. Three birdies in the last eight holes. He is squeezing in on Payne Stewart. Then two for the moment. Well, you can clearly hear that roar here at the ninth green, so I think Payne has a pretty good idea what's transpired. Hasn't had a birdie in 18 holes since the eighth yesterday. there. I thought that ball would turn a little bit more. 
So he makes the turn plus two for his round. Minus one for the championship. And his lead four at the start to two over Jansen. Lehman also turns at 37 plus three. Let's go back to Payne Stewart. How did this not go in? Well, he threw it outside the hole about four inches, and it really was just a half a ball, half an inch outside right edge. And he had a beautiful putt, but he was playing more break than there was there. So great opportunity there uh, to pick up a two-shot swing on Lehman. He didn't really know what's going on with Jansen, but uh, he uh, is due for a birdie, and it wears on you when you don't make birdies. Well, he's got a two-stroke advantage. Let's go back to 1966 when Arnold Palmer had a seven-shot lead over Billy Casper at the turn. You can see his bogey at 10. They both make birdie at 12, which was great stuff. And then Arnold le started leaking a little bit there coming in, obviously. And eventually to a playoff won by Casper. To show you how tough it is to lead this championship all the way without any ties, uh, the last wire-to-wire -wire winner with no ties involved Tony Jacklin at Hazeltine 28 years ago, 1970. That's what Payne Stewart's trying to do. And of course, Stewart was the last to lead with a couple of ties from the opening round. That was in 91 when he won the title. Well, got to get back to business. Roger, he needs us to just keep hitting those fairways and uh, he's has been struggling in that area, but I uh, just want to hit it though. Is the wind going a little left to right? The wind is a little left to right, Johnny, and uh, a little against, if anything. But again, Payne moves the ball left to right very well. I believe he can shape it properly for this fairway. Uh-oh. Is that over it? Oh, this is over going down the left side. This needs to get a hop to the right. It doesn't get it. Well, it's still all right, though. It stays in the intermediate. I thought it might get through into the long stuff. Ahead of the par 4, 12. Dan? 416 yards, critical driving hole. Wins from the players left to right here. Fairway slopes big time left to right. That pinches it off even more. Dan, don't you think there's a lot of resolve on his face? He looks like he's going to be tough to beat, I'll tell you. I know he doesn't have the lead, but he looks a lot of good things happening to him. Back to 10. Looks like a solid swing. He wants it to cut. Drawing to the left. That, too, should get through the fairway. Yeah, well, I came oh. back, right? <laughs> came back, that's a big difference. By the way, Nick Price and Bob Tway hard 10 and stay at plus three. Let's bring you right up to date for those of you joining us here at the Olympic Club, San Francisco. At the fourth, Lee Jansen with this birdie putt. Watch this read. A plus three for the championship. Tom Lehman, a 360 on his par save at two. Remains plus two at the fifth. Jansen. That was after his ball off the tee was in a tree, fell down, saved his par at the fourth. The leader, Payne Stewart, his tee shot will hit a tree. Fall well short in the deep rough and would make bogey to fall to minus two. Nick Price, third shot at the fifth. Sweet. Saves Spar to stay at plus two. Jansen at the seventh. Boy, he has that right to left stroke going. Curls in another. Birdie to go plus two. Tway, same hole, second shot. And would make pretty plus two for Tway. Also at the seventh, Payne Stewart for par. And that would drop him to minus one.
and his lead shrinks to two when Lee Jansen at the 11th. Another right to left birdie putt. Jansen, the winner 93, trails the 91 winner of the U.S. Open, Payne Stewart, by two strokes. Price, Tway, and Lehman are four back. Maggard and Stricker six out. Lee Westwood at plus six with Stewart Sink. Jeff Sloman, 68 today, plus eight. Tiger Woods through 16 is plus nine. Paul Azinger, what a round for him. 65, best of the championship. Good to see. You. Pretty amazingly high scores, huh, Dick? Mm. We had three subpar rounds yesterday, five today. David Duvall in at 69 with O'Meara and Montgomery. Montgomery, Sluman 68, Azinger 65. The five men to play Olympic today under par. Par was defined, Johnny, 87 years ago by the USGA. Perfect play without flukes, under ordinary weather conditions, always allowing two strokes on each putting green. It it's, sounds simple enough, doesn't it? It's funny. Every day the field has averaged over four over par, so it's, uh, it's tough stuff out here. Second shot for the leader, Payne Stewart, at the 10th. Ball sitting down just slightly in the intermediate cut of rough. 154 yards the whole wind at his back. And the big difference between that last little roll that Tom Lehman's ball took and Payne's being in the intermediate rough is being able to control the distance. Now, Payne has to factor in just how far short of this green to land it and just how hard it's going to hit where Tom can spin his ball and have a little better sense of how, how hard to hit it. You see the whole location is really hiding over there on the right. Uh, that can't hardly even be an issue for him. He's probably aiming at 10 feet left of the hole, and uh, you can see it's right there. It's way over by that bunker, and you don't want to hit it in that bunker. So I think this intermediate rough has been taking its toll. If you notice, there's a lot of bad shots coming out of this stuff, Roger. Well, it has grown as the week's gone on, John, yeah. and the ball now nestling down a little bit more than it did earlier in the week. Shot going to the right. I got a right kick. That is a tough bunker shot. Not much green to work with. That's the one thing he didn't want to do. You can get a little help uh, hitting on the left side of the green, as we saw earlier. So some decisions Payne's uh, making not the best and didn't take advantage of seven, eight, and nine. He had the good birdie putt at nine. Walking with his caddy, Mike Hicks, who waits to Definitely. Hear what Stewart has to say, and now Lehman's second shot. This now a nine iron for Tom. I'm sure he's just looking at that front edge. That's where he wants to land the ball. Shot starting right, trying to draw, but. Well, that's really a pretty good bounce. If it had been just the other way, he would have been in the same spot as Payne. Ahead to 12. And the second shots here, Dick, downhill on this par four. Lee Jansen has 173. Whole location back right. Center of the green is the optimum place to put it. And Lee Jansen, since the two bogeys he made in the first three holes, when he was seven shots back of Payne Stewart at the time, three under in the last eight to close to within two. Stewart in the bunker at 10. Very delicate, Roger. Not much green to work with. Only about a 30-foot shot, John, but green running away. I can't imagine him getting inside 15 feet, but... That's really a good play right there. How far is that? 12, 14? Uh, about 12 feet. It's pretty darn good. He's one of the better bunker players in the game. This is a stretch uh, in the previous three rounds where Stewart has par 10, 11, 12, and 13. All three rounds. Tom Lehman in the last three opens has been the leader with nine to play. 95 he was even. Minus four and 96 and 97. And then the disappointments. And uh, 
38-38-37 coming in and no U.S. Open Championship. Plus eight in the last nine holes, the last three years. Oh. As the leader, now he's yeah. chasing, and maybe that'll make a difference. Well, the last three opens, I think he was figuring they were sort of his to lose, not that he had a big lead, but, uh, you know, Payne's had leads of three, four, five, six shots, which is a big difference. Best putt of putt of Tom Lehman's now. Uh, again, downhill, should move a little bit from his right to left. But uh, an opportunity to put a little pressure on Payne. Should he lag it up there close or good fortune enough to hold, certainly. This is quicker than a lot of players figure, Roger, because you see, feel the upslope to about right here, but then it actually crests and wants to run away from you a little bit. Pretty good. They head to 12. Lee Jansen bidding for his second straight birdie at the 12th. This putts pool, uh, fool the players. Doesn't break left like it looks, does it, Mike? And they leave it short because it starts back up the hill the last five or six feet. This whole green has a tendency to break out to the exit on back right, and you can't see it. And back to 11, where Nick Price has this long putt for birdie. Johnny, you have the sense at this stage, as it has been recently, that one big long birdie putt or that one chip in could well determine who wins this championship. Well, this is a big one here. You know, Payne three putt at seven. Doesn't make a good birdie chance at eight and nine. Nine was really a good chance. And then uh, here we are at 10, uh, leaking a second shot from a pretty good uh, angle to the green. Jansen did make par. Oh, we got the happy birthday Kuchar next door. Yes. Yes. How sweet it is. Johnny, he got a good look at a leaderboard just to the right front of this green, so he knew exactly how he stood. That's a huge play. Great save for mm. wow. Stewart's par to stay at minus one. Layman with his par remains four behind Payne Stewart. Lee Jansen, the closest pursuer, is two back. Let's take a look at this putt again. He throws it well left of the hole. Uh, if you watch this, this thing was looked like six or eight inches left of the hole, and then he just let it track on in. See, he's way over there, six, seven, eight inches, and right in the heart. Beautiful speed. And he knows how big that one is. So they move ahead 211, the par four, 430 yards, seventh toughest through three rounds, 30 birdies and 115 bogeys, two tiered green into the win. Looking down on the right side of your screen here, this is the 11th hole, has just a little bit of a wiggle to the right. It was always classified as one of the hardest holes here at Olympic because the wind likes to go in this direction here. There's one nice grove of redwood trees here, the only one on the golf course that uh, some of the average slicers visit, but uh, shouldn't be an issue. And you need to hit it in the fairway. If you don't hit this fairway, uh, you're probably not gonna reach the green unless you get in the trample down area. Going with the three wood, Roger? He is, and we've talked about how he's had trouble driving the ball in the fairway, but he has hit this 11th fairway every day. Got to feel a little bit of a lift right there, and if he can get this ball in the fairway, I think he'll feel real good about himself. Looks good, Rog. This ball going down the right side, drawing into the very right side of the fairway. Depends on the bounce. Just into the intermediate cut. Let's go to 15, Gary Koch. Thank you very much, Dick. And we heard the happy birthday being sung to Matt Kuchar. That was here at 15. And now the putt for a birdie. Oh, the perfect birthday present. <laughs> I think he doesn't <laughs> like that. Knocks it in. <laughs> There's the smile. Moves to eight over par for the championship. We go back to 11. Oops, hooking. 
This ball going up the left side, but it's going to be fine, John. Good. Little draw, working with the slope. So Lehman in the fairway at 11 uh, with Stewart into the first cut. Got a 123 yard wedge shot back in his stance. This moments ago, Tiger Woods at plus nine for the championship. He's two over today. And chance for birdie. Par three, 13th. And that is where Lee Jansen is, putting the peg in the ground, the yardage 199, the whole location back left. And as Johnny Miller indicated earlier, Raymond Floyd, it is a very accessible whole location today. I would have expected to see many more birdies than we've seen here. The, the greens are firm and you just let it land in the first portion and the ball feeds right back there. There are those two bogeys in the first three holes as Lee Jansen at that time with seven shots back, but three under in the last eight holes including that fortunate bounce at 11, which produced the last birdie. See a very narrow green. The whole location's right there, excuse me. It's right back there in the back left. And he's playing a five iron, Johnny. Club of choice here. Right there. That looks real good, fellas. A little right of the flag, up high, real high shot. It'll take a hard bounce and feed. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. That is a wonderful shot by Lee Jansen. Momentum. Again, he's the only player in the last 13 groups that is under par on today's round. How about a look from the MetLife blimp at this beautiful shot? over the bunker, which is just in front of the green, takes the kick left, and again, ball's feed to the back of the green at 13. Executed perfectly by Jansen, back to 11. It's interesting, in 93 at Baldestrol, Jansen finished two ahead of Payne Stewart when he won the championship, now trails by two, but with a birdie chance ahead as Tom Lehman studies his second shot. A lot of reflection going on here, Dick. Not much behind it to the left, but there's, but there's uh, behind it to the right. With David yeah. Fabe? Well, this final uh, pair is being timed now. There are no so bad times to date, but they are out of position in relation to the group ahead of them. Well, if you guys would have paid closer attention to that, Jack Nicholas might only have about six major championships. <laughs> You expect me to comment on that? <laughs> Tom Lehman, four shots behind Stewart. 183 yards to the hole. The wind has picked up and directly in the player's face. This is a little uphill. This is a four. These players have no idea they're being timed. And this shot going right of the hole at the center of the green. Good play. Payne Stewart not just in the intermediate cut of rough, but has a perfect lie. The grass is supporting the ball very well. 167 yards to the hole. This is a seven iron. The jump all over this to get it back to that hole. The whole location right there. A shot going at the left side of the green needs to get right some and comes up well short. I just don't think he had enough club there into this win. Second shot in the air at the par 4 12 for Bob Tway. 152 the yardage down the hill and short sided mm. in the rough. He hit it about 142 yards, Dan, which is not what you want to do here. Tway at plus three. Playing with Nick Price, who also is at plus three. One over on his round today. This hole has played surprisingly hard today, Mark. Uh, you'd think it, it would be buryable, but 
there's only been about half the guys hit the fairway and even less than that that can get the ball on the green. So the, the hole is playing uh, very difficult. Well, Nick Price has not yet made a birdie today. In fact, he hasn't made a birdie on the backside all week, Raymond, but he's only got 143 yards here, just a nine iron shot. You would think he could get this one within, say, 15 feet of the hole. He needs to make something happen. Yeah, he's going to need a birdie or two coming in to have a chance at this championship. This looks pretty good. That is a good shot. Grab it. That'll give him a good good opportunity there. 12 after playing in the middle of the pack all week as you take a look at Nick's back nine line. Again, no birdies on the backside this entire championship. But as you said, Raymond, 12 now playing the third most difficult. We've tried to figure it out. Haven't been able to come up with nope. any kind of answer. MetLife blimp cruising high above the skies of Olympic Club. Some clouds beginning to move in, but still above high enough. You've got blue sky, and that's where Snoopy 2 has been cruising all week. Final round of this U.S. Open championship. Payne Stewart, his lead has been paired to just two, and he's at 11. Well, hasn't drawn a very good line, this intermediate kind of rough. Ball has settled down. You can see just about half the ball above it. Very thick right in here. Got a little funny ridge there in his way also, right? He does. He has to deal with that little slope from left to right as well as a ridge. There's a ridge that runs here. Rear tier. And it, it browse right in this area here. So it's sort of awkward. Can he, Do you think he'll throw it just above the ridge? Or into no, the I think side he of has it? to go into the side of it and below it, John. So it'll kick right pretty good. Yes. He landed it short of the ridge. It's released. Oh, that's another brilliant play from around the greens. Got to give him a lot of credit, Roger. Where he's put the ball on his approach shots, he could be a lot higher than he is at the score. And despite that nice play by Payne Stewart, Lee Jansen circling around a birdie putt, which would get him to within one of Payne Stewart. It has been quite a march by Lee Jansen. This is right down the fall line, too, Dan. This is a pretty straight putt. I would expect he should make this one. off. Cameras clicking in the background, John Schroeder. Somebody's using the shooting pictures with a camera. Mm. What, I mean, a, what a time, huh? Yeah, it's funny how you hear things when you don't want to. <laughs> it's pretty quiet out here as it is, but uh, might have startled him a little bit. Hopefully, he should be able to re regain his composure. Well, he waits to 11. Tom Lehman's birdie putt. Pulling a lot of putts, guys. 13. Lee Jansen has gathered himself. This again to get within one and get back to even par. Yeah! And Jansen has Payne Stewart in the crosshairs now within one. 2-11. Payne Stewart, the short putt for his par. Fine save. So Payne Stewart, seven. Many regard a lucky number. Seven years ago, he won the championship. He has seven to play, leading by one. Birdie putt on the way for Nick Price at 12. Mm. Just can't get it. Well, he's had fits with this back nine. Still birdie-less. Early on, it looked like he would make the best challenge of anyone. To 18. This was a, a while back on tape. That was that birdie attempt by Tiger Woods at 18 to finish his round. And like so many putts this week, uh, strong and long and awry. And then for his par. Severe kick out. And now for bogey. And a 73 plus 
contend for the championship. 74, 72, 71, 73, and not a very happy 22 year old leaving the 18th. At the 14th, Lee Jansen. That's a three wood right up the middle of the fairway. Beautifully struck. Fuego, he is on fire right now for Olympic Club. When you're playing this kind of golf and this kind of pressure, I cannot tell you how exciting that is to watch uh, from on the ground level. At 12, Bob Tway's par attempt. Never got it online at all. So Bob Tway drifting further and further down the leaderboard. In the meantime, that's a look at the tree line shoot which the players will come out of on the tee at the par 412. They move this tee back 26 yards. So it becomes a, an even more critical driving hole as again it slopes severely left to right the fairway and Payne Stewart takes a look down out of that tree line shoot. His lead now being trimmed to just one. And this hole favors a draw. This is the one hole out here almost that uh, Tom Lehman's got to figure his shot is perfect, and uh, for a person who cuts the ball or even hits it straight, this tree limb that's sitting right here is a real issue. I tell you, you got to be very careful of that one. This ball turning over right to left. Just in the left center of the fairway, it'll start kicking right. That should stay in the fairway, I believe. That's a beauty. That's long and in the right center, and he's going to have a wedge in his hand. Very long. Divot. Uh -oh. Divot. Uh -oh. Divot settled into Good the. see that coming. Sand filled divot. Felt, felt like Vanna White there. I could see that coming on bankrupt. That was a bad one. That's not very lucky. Now Lambert. This sets up for him. He'll like this hole, Johnny. He likes to put that little draw up there, and with, with all of this hill here, that, that fits him beautifully. Softly, it's going to be good. It is good and out of the divot, unlike Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart started the day, four shots in the lead. Lee Jansen playing the best golf of all in the last 10 holes has moved to within one as he too seeks his second U.S. Open title. Par four, second shot. Lee Jansen trails Payne Stewart by one. John Schroeder, take us through it. 161 yards. The wind is what, what there is. is directly behind him. Pins cut in the back right portion of the green. Seven iron shot. Ball's above his feet, so he's got to be careful not to pull it. He set that way up in the air. A little left, I think, of where he wanted it to go, but it's going to be right in the middle of the green. Very nice. Very nice. Jansen four under the last 10 holes to move into tight contention. This a moment ago, Nick Price trying to step on the gas, get something going. He's four back of Payne Stewart. This is a six iron. Again, 199 the yardage, back left hole location. Pops into the rough. Not a bad lie, though. He's not going to like it. And back across to 12. Tom Lehman. Payne Stewart about to witness in person the unfortunate break he got here. Well, he's been very fortunate throughout the tournament. It's one of the few bad breaks we've seen him have, but you'd hate to see something like this influence a, a major championship, but uh, you've got to keep your wits. You've got to be uh, collect yourself and go ahead and play the best shot you can from there. Tom Lehman now 169 to the hole in this hole location. Not a good one for Tom. Uh, 
at a time when he starts to be needs to be a little more aggressive, he's going to have to look left of this hole. This is a tough one to get at with a right to left shot. This is a seven iron. Trying to hold it, Roger. He's trying to, Johnny, but this is going at the left side of the green. Just a tough shot for his flight, like you said. As you can see, Payne coming up to his ball here. He's got, uh-oh, I see it. How can that happen to me? But now you got to get it back together. The toughness has got to come in there. This is a U.S. Open championship, and dadgummit, do what's necessary. Almost use this as a challenge. That's right. And I think he's got that resolve. I can see it. He, he, I think he's going to be strong with it and play, play something that'll get him on this green. And that is the worst divot. I mean, you're right in the middle of it. If he hits down on it, the sand's going to fluff it. Well, he's taking his uh, practice swings and other divots, Raymond. Trying to get a feel for what he's got. That's pretty clever. He has 137 yards for the hole, fellas, and uh, the ball is not only in that sand-filled divot, it has settled slightly. You know, the weight of the ball has just kind of settled down, so that's going to compound the problem. Roger, wouldn't like a little 7-iron or 8-iron just back in your stance and just chip it and let it just hit 40 yards short of the green and run right down onto the green be a good little shot? That is an option. You could play it up the left side and let the slope just run it and chase it down into the center of the green would be the safer shot to play, although a tricky one. Uh, but to me, that's the easiest try. way to catch it clean, though. I mean, you could just sort of half skull it down onto the green. You know? I agree with you, Jim. Yeah. Uh, but that's not a shot that we normally play over here. Uh, if he tries to fly the ball up onto the green, then I think he takes a greater chance of catching the ball heavy. This is a nine iron, so I think he's going to try to fly this ball onto the green. Sound like he hit it clean. Actually, he got a little heavy, and it's going right. Bunker. That's in the front bunker. Could be buried. Mm. Boy, there's that came out. It looks like looks like that's a better line than he had out in the fairway in that <laughs> sandy divot. About equal. That just wasn't good. Looks mm. like he's going to come right down steep and try to hit the ball first. See all of that sand come up when he when he hits down on it. It helps fluff it as well. So it's just a terribly hard shot. And right over to 13. Second shot for Nick Price in the rough. That's an excellent shot, Dan, but he's at the point in this championship that he needs to make birdies, not good pars. 14. Lee Jansen from plus two at the start to even for the championship, one good. within Payne Stewart. Good angle, and John Schroeder just putting right up the fall. Yeah, it's right up the hill, about 27 feet. You can be sort of thinking of thinking about making this. Not a hard putt for this length. Good run at it. For Jansen to stay one behind Stewart. Dean Stewart got a bad time on his second shot, and uh, you will probably see in a few minutes uh, the official come out to notify him of that fact. And there he is right now. That's uh, Tom Meeks doing the timing. Dean Stewart ready to go now with his third. Ball has just come out of the crater, but there's nothing behind his ball but air. Not a good lie. What a pretty good shot. Pretty good shot. He's got a good chance for his par. Would have been an awesome shot if he carried about another six inches, Raymond. Yeah, exactly. And over to 13, Nick Price trying to save par. Remain at plus three. Got it. Yeah. Nick Price hangs on to a glimmer of hope as he heads to the 14th, and we'll go to the 15th. Thank you very much, Dan. And here at the 151-yard Par three, front right hole location. USGA saying it's the toughest location on this hole. There. Yeah. And at the final round, every time the 
championship has been played here at Olympic. The winner has made birdie at 15. But today, we've only seen six. So those that have made them have hit the ball past the hole and putted back toward the hole location. Gary, don't you think that he has to play this ball at least to the hole all on the fly? He can't take a chance leaving it short right now. Absolutely. Bunker. John, the players that we've seen struggle here have been the ones who have taken eight iron and tried to just carry the ball onto the front part of the green. And if he is smart, he'll take the seven iron and play to the center of the putting surface. That, that is right at it, Gary. Right at it. Oh, look at this shot. Very well played. Carried the ball to the hole, just what he needed to do. Ended up in the dead middle of the green, and that is a makeable putt. Go back to 12. And while Jansen continues to fire at the holes, Payne Stewart continues to struggle to hang on. Another par-saving putt here at 12. Roger. Now there is a bit of slope off of the bunkers on the right that I think influences this putt some, certainly in the start. Uh, it should not break too much, but it's not an easy putt to read at all. And it did move left with that slope off the bunker. And with that, the lead has evaporated on Payne Stewart four to begin the day. Jansen probably has no idea what's just transpired at 12. He heads up to another good shot at 15, and he is even with Payne Stewart. This for bogey. Lee Jansen tied now with Payne Stewart. Jansen through 14. Payne Stewart's reaction. The lead is all gone. Welcome back. Currently a battle of two former U.S. Open champions. Payne Stewart led by seven strokes today after the third hole. Eleven holes later, Lee Jansen, who won this title, in 93 is tied for the lead. And we go to 15. Lee Jansen is eyeballing a putt for yet another birdie. Gary walking up here, they just posted the score here on the scoreboard at this green. The crowd went crazy, obviously, and Lee didn't even flinch. He didn't look at the scoreboard or anything. I think he is really just focusing on making pars until the very end and maybe make a birdie and then see what happens. Well, he's had success here at 15, John. Two birdies, one yesterday and one on Friday here. So he has some good vibes. Well, he's, he's in the ideal position, you said, to, to make birdie, putting back up the hill from about 22 feet. Ball moves a little bit to the right as it gets near the hole. Great look into his eyes there. but yet still appears to be fairly relaxed. This putt for a birdie and the outright lead. Back to 13. Thanks, Gary. Tom Lehman has already teed off his ball on the green. This is a hole. You can get a stroke back. It is birdieable today, but for the first time in three days, Payne Stewart does not have an outright lead. This is a five iron. Try to turn in right to left, let the ball get back to the hole. Ball going at the center of the green. Good looking. Looks pretty good. 
Oh my. Uh oh. Things aren't looking good now. Hidden from our vantage point. It looks like a two-man race at the point, but still with Nick Price and Tom Lehman there, only three behind, a birdie or two coming in, and boy, we've got a big wide open championship on hand here. I don't know if Payne knows what's happened there, but he didn't get a good break. He hit a beautiful shot. To 14. Second shot for Nick Price. See the ball above his feet, downwind, 145 yards. Hits it right where you want to hit it underneath the hole, straight up the putt. Birdie chance. That would be his first in four rounds. He needs one desperately. He's at plus three. Three behind the co-leaders Lee Jansen and Payne Stewart. The first five men on the leaderboard, all with major championships. Jansen and Stewart have won this title. Lee Westwood. The Tiger Woods of Europe is what they have tabbed him at 18 with his par and a 71 finishing round plus seven for the championship. It appears that Lee Westwood will have the best finish by a European player. Here are those in the past Montgomery dominating that role four times. Go to 14 in the third shot of Bob Tway. This was a very poor lie in the intermediate rough for Tway. Played it nicely though, but still, like Raymond said before. When you're four over, you can't afford to be saving good pars. At 16. Lee Jansen will have the honor at this. 609 yard par five. Dog leg left that keeps moving left. One of the few holes here at Olympic where the fairway actually slopes with the dog leg. We'll go back to 13. Roger had a chance to check out the line. It is a horrible, a very hard swing at this ball to move it a very short distance. Up close, not hot. Terrible line. 16 again. That's a driver, and he's hit it absolutely beautifully right down the left side of the fairway, turning over. Great shot there. Playing aggressively on John Schroeder. And he certainly seems to be in command of his swing right now, mm. hitting the best shots by far. A lot of momentum, and he made that curling putt at four, and then the ball stays in the tree for, what, five minutes while he's walking back to the tee, and it falls out and makes a chip in par. Back to 13. Tom Lehman has a birdie putt, but we're going to show you the lie that Payne Stewart had after Tom Lehman strokes this birdie. This putt back uphill will move a little bit from right to left. Go, go, go. Never high enough. Never strong enough either. A little Roger. tentative with the putter all day. Roger, a lot of putts left. Have you noticed that? Yes, it's a little D cell, I think, John. Well, Raymond Payne Stewart has not made a birdie since the eighth hole yesterday, and he was faced with this lie in his second here. Ugly, ugly stuff. When you see a swing that... Look at that grass, Raymond. Yeah, that big of a swing to try to make the ball go 12, 15 feet. So with all this negative stuff going on the golf course here, I mean, he's still tied for the lead. Got to grind down and get this one down. You have got to keep it together. He's tied for this championship. Uh, you're still in front. Don't let it don't let it beat you. You got to get it back. Is this guy moving just a little left, Raymond? Just a little left. I think he might make this putt. It's a key putt. It's huge. Got to hit it. No. Not a good effort at all. Back to back bogeys recorded by Payne. And he moves to plus one. Trailing Jansen by a shot. And the first time he has been over par in this championship, he got off to a great start. 
but has seen his four-shot lead go by the wayside. Now Lehman for par. And Lehman's still in it. But Payne Stewart heads to 14. Now trailing Lee Jansen. This is the point. 14. And a birdie chance for Nick Price. This was moments ago. And denied once again. Meanwhile, at 18, here comes the leading amateur player, the only amateur to make the cut. And you can hear them chanting, Cooch, Cooch, the 20-year-old celebrating his birthday today. <laughs> I mean, this is this is almost too good, too much, too soon, isn't it? Well, it's it's certainly deserved, if you ask me. The reigning United States Amateur Champion and the great Masters finish and the smiles and uh, sort of earned it. And he played even through four rounds at the Masters this spring, and he was one under through his first two rounds here at Olympic 76 yesterday, and he's four over today tied for 21st at the Masters, and uh, he's enjoyed every moment. He's produced some great shots. He's currently tied for 15th, this 20-year-old from Georgia Tech. He's thanking the gallery for being so much behind him. Appreciates him. Now at the 14th tee. Teeing off from the right side of the tee box, I'm a little surprised this hole goes right to left, and they'll have to flirt with some trees on the right-hand side. But he has ripped this ball down the left center. That is huge. Tee shot on the way for Nick Price at the par three 15th. Just left of the flag. And a well played shot. That is makeable from there. He needs to get one in, Gary. He hasn't made one yet. And back to 14. Payne Stewart. Going with this through it again. This going down the right center, drawing to the center. That's ideal. Two good shots here. Very good shots. Uh, Payne Stewart, of course, seven under par the first 27 holes. Last 46 holes, plus eight. Both Stewart and Lehman safely in the fairway, but the man they chase now is Lee Jansen. Back with the par 5 16th, second shot for our leader, Lee Jansen. Important layup here. Had to turn the ball from right to left. And he's done just that, and that's in the left side of the fairway. That will open up the hole location. That is ideal. Go back to 14. Payne Stewart is away. Roger. 137 yards to the hole, perfect lie. Ball a little above his feet. Wind behind him, a little bit from the right. Not an easy hole location to get at, John, with this hole cut in the back right. It's downwind and just a little left. Coming a little left. Everything wants you to, to draw the ball here, and of course the perfect shot would be to hold it against that wind and against that slope. Probably a good play would be hit it right at the hole location. It'll drift just a touch left and leave himself a 10 to 15 foot pot and that would be a good spot straight up the hill. Keep it underneath the hole a little bit. This is a nine iron. And he is trying to hold it against the wind. It's a little right of the hole. That was masterfully played. to 16. Lee Jansen, our leader, preparing to play his third shot. John Schroeder, the yardage. He's got 80, 86 yards. Gary's got his 56 degree, I guess you call it a strong sandwich in today's parlance, because his other sandwich is like 64 degrees. This is where Greg Norman lost the Tour Championship for four years ago, shooting at this flag. I, I, I don't think I'd be shooting at this flag, Gary. Well, I think you want to be just left of it, John. As you say, the green is very firm. If he goes right at it, he'll land the ball on a down slope. That's right at it. 
Well, it carries back behind the hole. It does manage to spin. We'll have about 20 feet left. Back at the 15th, Nick Price now for a much needed birdie. Gary, he has had chance after chance and has yet to convert. This one very makeable though. Moving just a little right at the end. Seems to have hit very few putts today that start on line. We go up to 18. And moments ago for his par, Matt Kuchar. <laughs> That's great stuff, huh? Isn't it parts? He has a flair for <laughs> Look at Dad. the dramatic and Father Peter, who's a Florida amateur tennis champion in his days. He's learned to play golf as well and is a five handicap. Father and son, Father's Day, birthday. No wonder they're smiling. It's hard to believe Tom Lehman after that 300 plus yard drive in a green light special there does not hit the green with a wedge. Uh, Roger, what happened there? Well, it was just in the intermediate cut, Johnny, and it just didn't hold. The ball took a great big bounce when it hit the green and just released on through. Couldn't get any spin on it. And the lie he has now, although not a good one, is certainly a far better than lie than Payne Stewart had the whole previous. His strength here is an advantage, isn't it, Roger? Just it is, because he's going to have to play a little bit of an explosion shot, Johnny, and he's just going to have to be real firm through the ball with his forearms and wrists. Really not bad at all. Interestingly, not a single birdie between these two men, Tom Lehman and Payne Stewart, and their entire rounds. Uh, Roger, you know Payne Stewart as well as almost anybody, and that expression on his face walking down that 14th fairway was not of anything, but it, he was mad at himself. You could see that he thought this was his championship, and he's let it go, and he's now got a whole different mindset. Instead of protecting, he's now, I think, playing with a different resolve. I don't know what you're feeling or I, what you're seeing. I would agree with that completely, John. Uh, I think, you know, he said before the round started, if I go making bogeys, I'm going to let other people have a chance to win this championship. And uh, now he's in the come from behind role kind of feeling, you know, he's got to go make some birdies. And I think you're going to see a little more aggressive Payne Stewart here coming in. This is outside right edge. He can, it's a definite makeable putt. Speed on that one, Roger. That's resolve right there, Johnny. That is really shows a lot about the man. That's wonderful. His first birdie gets him back to even and tied with Jansen as we move ahead. And Jansen now has a putt to regain the lead here at 16. Slice putt, Gary? Yes. Pretty good movement from left to right. It stayed straight a long time. Boy, it did. I think it surprised him. Didn't break to the last, what, three feet? Correct. He did hear that roar, too, as he was lining up his putt. Didn't have much of an effect on him, but he certainly heard it. That was awful clutch of Payne Stewart there, Gary. Man. Back to 14. And the par putt for Tom Lehman. And that about douses his hopes. Mm. Tough. Four times in the last group and four times no silver cup. It's the Buffalo Bills of golf four straight years. Well, I can't say for sure. He, he could hole out and birdie the next three. You never know in this game, but. would be talking about a memorable open then. Yeah. Four back, four to go for Tom Lehman. Ahead at 16. 
B. Jansen with this two and a half, three foot putt for his par five. Charlie in a tie for the lead. Well hold. And Jansen will move over to the tough 17th, which has been his nemesis through three rounds. Another look at Payne's birdie. Johnny, this is about the firmest putt we've seen him hit in a while. It looked low there. Yeah, but you know, it had the speed to, to stay up, didn't it? It did. I was surprised it hung in there. And maybe that's why Lehman missed his. He thought it would break, and it didn't. Fire rekindled in Payne Stewart. Now as we at, the, move. at the 15th tee, excuse me, Dick. This was the site of a poor tee shot by Stewart yesterday. Got to be careful not to go head hunting here, Gary. Yeah, it needs to just put it in the middle of the green. Holding this shot against the wind right at it. Oh, a bit unlucky. Landed right on the down slope and scoots well deep into the green. That had to be a beautiful looking shot from the tee, huh? It was right at it, Johnny. I, I mean, mean, he was holding it against the wind. It was beautiful. There's a brow on that hill right there. There's a downslope right here. There's a brow that goes like that, and it hit right on that downslope. Lehman next to play. And Roger, I would think uh, tough for him now. Yeah, making his job even more difficult is the next three holes. The hole locations are all on the right with the wind from the right, and that's a very tough place for Tom to get at. And we see Tom Lehman in the four past four years when he's had a chance to win the Open, over par in the last nine holes every time, three over today. This now is an eight iron. This shot going well left of the hole. Well, kick left and finds the bunker. We go to 17. And 17, the toughest hole 11 years ago and the toughest again this year. And it's been extremely difficult for Lee Jansen. There have been only nine birdies here at 17 all week and none today. And Jansen has played at plus five and five under on all the other holes. So this is a key drive. and figure out that plus five, that bogey, double bogey, double bogey. And his resolve, we talked about the resolve of Payne Stewart's, he is on fire right now. Everything is wonderful. The two men who battled for this championship in 1993 are at it again. Lee Jansen, Payne Stewart, final holes for the 98th U.S. Open title. Fifteenth, Payne Stewart with a lengthy putt for a birdie. Is this awkward? Well, he definitely has to worry about the knob that comes into the green from the left-hand side. The knob we're talking about is right in here that it sticks out. It's tentative again. Is that Gary? John, I'm saying it's a good three, three and a half feet short at least. And not an easy putt. Moving to the right. See Tom Lehman replacing his ball. Bunker shot. Ended in that position. Actually scooted right by the hole. This putt left for his par. What's it do from here, Gary? John, there's not a lot to it from here. Perhaps just a little right to left. Yep, good stroke. Good up and down. We go to 17. 
Central leader Lee Jansen, second shot. Last time even par won the Open, Corey Pavin at Shinnecock in 95. You can imagine the thoughts going through his head after two double bogeys in a row. Uh, just got to really regroup, get the ball on the green, any part on the green, but this hole location is the hardest one on the on the hole, and you got to be very careful of getting it long left. Let's go back to 15. Par putt for co-leader Payne Stewart. Well hold. Back to 17. Jansen ready now. 11 yards. Looks real good, Johnny. It's, if it's far enough. Oh, what a shot. But that's going to be an extremely fast putt there. But on the green here, you can't really complain. Now, you've been saying all week, Johnny Miller, a four here uh, is like a birdie. And he's playing great. 13 out of 17 greens. And with these fairways as hard as they are, 10 out of 13 fairways is huge. Now Jansen, uh, even though he is focused in on the work at hand, acknowledging someone who yelled some encouragement from the gallery. Well, he's deep in his zone right now. And we go back to the par 5 16th and the tee shot. Payne has struggled here the last two days, missing to the right. Got away with it yesterday. Well, he did. He hit it far enough to the right. It was in the area trampled down by the gallery. Going with the three wood, which he has done every day. Well, in fact, Gary, he has missed this fairway all three rounds. So needs a good one now. It's going to go through the fairway on that line. And that makes the hole extremely difficult. Payne Stewart finding the rough at 16. He may have trouble reaching the green in regulation. Lee Jansen on the putting surface at 17. We'll be right back. The battle between past champions continues. Lee Jansen, Payne Stewart, even. Jansen playing ahead on the green at the tough 17, and Stewart walking to his second shot at 16, the par five. And Jansen's sort of out of position, even though hitting the green is pretty darn good. He's got it above the hole in a watch out position. Uh, it's um, putting right down the fall line, and uh, it's just one of those you try to cozy it down and hope you get the right speed. Let's take a look at a, another graphic on how well he's played today. Just amazing uh, uh, how solidly his game has been since the fourth hole. He made the curling putt on four, and then the ball in the tree incident. Ever since then, everything's been great. After bogeys at two and three. You can see he's looking at his caddy's feet, it looks like to me. He just wants to hit it about right here, and that's it. Right there, just there, and then now it's trickling. Wow, this is a putt. <laughs> is great. Well, there's no double bogey there, Dick Enberg. Yep. There's his par. By far the best he's played this tough 17. He grew up a big baseball player and fan of the Orioles. That was like laying a perfect bunt. Back at 16, second shot for co-leader Payne Stewart. Not a good lie, but could have been worse. Trying to advance this ball down the fairway. If he can get it down there a couple hundred yards, it'll have about 160, 65 left. Right there in the crossing area. Well, five years ago, 93, Jansen and Stewart battled it out. Final group at Baldus Roll. Jansen at 16 was not away, but Stewart said, go ahead and play from off the green, and this is what happened. And then Payne 
with this birdie putt. Jansen would shoot a final round 69, Stewart 70, and Jansen in tears accepted the United States Open Cup, a two stroke win. Here's 18. Well, it's just a little small par four in case you just tuned in. 347 yards is just really a three iron sand wedge. But uh, the green is the big tail, but you've got to hit that three iron straight, and it's a blind second shot. It's a blind uh, driving shot over the hill, and you've got to battle your nerves. He, of course, the green is behind him, so you got the long walk back uh, from the 17th green to the 18th tee. And he has played himself some golf, hasn't he? Since that leaving the third green, four under par, and with all the pressure, Four over par, and he trailed the Payne Stewart at the time by seven strokes. People you see in the amphitheater up by the green on the left-hand side, many were there at 7.30 this morning to get a special spot, hoping that this kind of drama would unfold, and they have not been disappointed. <laughs> Meanwhile, at 16. Well, Payne Stewart arriving at his ball and he's going to be left with a very lengthy third shot to a very difficult hole location. Gary, isn't he in the crossing and there's no relief from that crossing. Is it real tight grass there, Roger? Uh, it is. It's very, very tight, John. He has 170 yards left to the hole, but the lie is quite good. Mm -hmm. A little uh, upslope? A little bit of an upslope, but this is one hard-looking hole location. The pin looks just like it's sticking straight up out of the bunkers. Uh, you're going to have to shape something in left to right wind helping slightly. I'm going to assume this will be a six iron. Try to move it to the right. Must be looking left of the hole. Anything right, very difficult to get up and down. Gary, you think you'll aim at that 16 marker right there and that, cut it off of it? I would certainly hope so, John. That's what it appears. This is a seven iron. Hit it then. Miss hit it. Needs to get Gotta lucky go. here. Oh. Finds the front bunker. Fortunately, it kicked back. It did not bury, but very little green. Now we Jansen was parred this 18th all three rounds. Only 195. Carry on the down slope. He got a lot of divot there. Right down the middle, John. He has to hit right the crest of the hill and quickly on down the bottom. There it is. It's the down slope and scoots and will run down into all those divots. It'll be interesting to see if he gets a clean lie. There's all kinds of landmines there, and he does, so you got to say a little prayer when you go down there. Go, thank you for the lie. <laughs> you want me to? So Lee Jansen, currently tied. Payne Stewart doing everything right from the fourth hole on. He has been the top player of the day. Yeah, let's take a look at Payne Stewart's swing. It is a tight lie. You can see on the edge of the crossing. Let's see, he's aiming left. He's aiming about over here. Takes it back, that beautiful left arm, straight left arm. He's in good shape right there, good shape. And he comes down. He's trying to sort of undercut, fade one under here. And you can see he just got barely a little bit of divot, a groove down, face open, and lost about 10 yards on it. Jansen and his playing competitor Steve Stricker walking on the 18th fairway and there is Larry Jansen Lee's father he was present at Baldus Roll when Jansen won his first US Open championship introduced him to the game but uh, was not his teacher as I said uh, through his little league days the baseball was his game and the family moved from the Baltimore area to Florida and that's where he started playing some serious golf. Well, he has tremendous resolve, uh, this Lee Jansen. He, he made a quote that I thought was amazing. He says, I come to the U.S. Open expecting nothing to be fair. I expect that if you hit it in the rough, you can't hit it out. Put it above the hole, you can't two-putt. If you hit it in the bunker, you don't have a shot. If you don't hit good shots, you don't make the cut. It's a test of wills to find out who overcomes adversity the best and who has the most patience.
and so far it's been a good admonition to go by because it is a test of will and a test of skill and patience and like I said when he left that third green four over par and now proceeded to play four under the last 14 holes with this stifling pressure trying to make a comeback on Payne Stewart who's hanging in there that's good stuff I'm telling you it's kind of kind of cute Johnny when I was uh, talking to uh, Lee's dad is Lee's wife said don't tell Lee his dad sir I don't want any distraction they said I don't think we want to distract him either well John what's he got around 100 yards He's got 111 yards. He's got a pitching wedge. He's down there, down there in the hollow where we can't see him, but uh, he's in a pretty comfortable position here. He can, don't you think, throw it above the hole location and let the spin work. But we're going to go over to 16 and Payne Stewart out of the bunker. Third shot. On a bit of an upslope, which will help. It needs to land it on the very front of the green. Fourth shot. Uh, he carries it all the way to the hole, and that trickles a good 9 or 10 feet by, back to 18. You can see intimidation there with that big bunker sticking up there. Can't see the bottom of the green. Main thing is hit it solidly. Right at it, Johnny. Right at it. Let's see how good he interprets the yardage. That should spin back a little bit. Um, see if it comes back. And it's hanging up there today, so he's going to have the fastest putt of his life here. So he's going to have to just nurse it down there, cozy it in there. Most likely it'll run by three or four feet and he'll have that putt very, with a good chance of uh, winning the open right there if he can two putt. 33 year old Lee Jansen is home in the Orlando area, as is the case with Payne Stewart. Tom Lehman now at 16. This is Lehman's fourth shot. Found the little rough after two. The ball to that position. That'll be a nice five, but a little too late, I'm afraid, for Lehman. Gary, you got to appreciate Lee Jansen with how he's routined all these tough holes the last uh, 14 holes. Isn't it amazing? Well, I don't think there's any question, Johnny. He's been the man who's hit the ball the best in this last round. Now the walk up the hill at 18. Thousands in the gallery surrounding this finishing hole at Olympic. I thought a very intelligent shot uh, by him to get it above the hole. Uh, don't mess with it. Uh, and if it wants to back up, fine. But if not, you're putting. Back at 16. Huge putt now for Payne Stewart. Remain at even par and tied for the lead. It's gone by a good four, four and a half feet. He got a good look at the leaderboard. He knows that Lee Jansen made four at 17. Roger, that just uh, went off in his right hand, didn't it? That was a little trigger, Jim. That's one of the very few poor putting strokes we've seen Payne put on it this week. Needs this desperately. Pretty straight from here, guys. Might turn just a fraction left. <laughs> and Stewart with a bogey six. Our 516 falls one shot behind Lee Jansen. Again, for those of you joining us, by four at the beginning of this final round, had built his lead to seven over Lee Jansen. When Jansen bogeyed the third hole, but Jansen, with some meticulous play, has chased and caught and taken the lead. And he stands waiting for his putt on 18. 
while Stewart moves to the toughest of all the Olympic tests, the 17th. Steve Stricker, and this mm. will benefit uh, Lee Jansen, same line. Boy, you think this isn't an advantage. This is really big. You know, Johnny, Lee still has not looked at a scoreboard to my knowledge. Steve's got to hit the ball up in this area here and just let gravity feed it down the hill from there. He's done just that. Now it'll actually pick up speed. And most likely, uh, Lee will have probably the best he can do is two feet from the hole, but he's going to throw it out a little bit more to the right. That's what he learned from that one, I think, John Schroeder, is that he can throw it out out in this area here and then let it die. Uh, is that and then it'll, he has a chance of just cozying it down there that way. It won't pick up as much speed. Johnny, I think that's what he wants to do, but I think he's got it set in his mind that he's going to have to make another short putt coming back for four. I don't think he wants to sit there and say, gee, I hope I get it close enough. I don't have to putt it again. So you can see where he's looking. He is looking right there. He figures that he can stop it right there, then it'll exit to the left. He gets to watch Stricker again, which is nice. Pretty good putt, huh, John? Very good under the, under the circumstances. And he got it right below the hole. I mean, he's, he should make it. He had to see this. There's no way that he walked up to that green without looking at that big leaderboard just staring you in the face. Well, I'm, I'm, he may have, but I mean, he, he's, he's just been focused on his golf ball since uh, the fourth hole. I agree. Meanwhile, Payne Stewart on the tee at 17. It looked like he just almost had tired legs coming into that. Here's Caddy. Leading for first cut, and that's where it lands. Now Steve Stricker for his par. Three over, 73 today. Good championship for Stricker. On the first page of the leaderboard, his wife, Nikki, we've seen in the past, was his caddy. She's got other things planned now. In August, they'll cheer their first child. Now, Papa Jansen. What a Father's Day putt this will be. <laughs> Looking skyward. He's got a dead straight uphill putt. You just couldn't have a better putt to have. And, of course, there's not any guarantee Payne Stewart could finish birdie birdie, but... Um, Wherever you want it. for the championship, 68. Sixth man under par in this final round. Lee Jansen has made his statement. He leads by one, now it's up to Payne Stewart. One of the clutch performances I've seen in modern golf right there on a super tough golf course. Not one player in red figures, even par, the magical score the USGA loves. They've got it, great stuff. And the fans have been super this week, well behaved, couldn't have been any better. Now it's in Payne Stewart's lap, Vic. This is his wife, we believe, that's uh, Beverly. It is Beverly Jansen. They have a son as well who is here, Connor. Payne Stewart, he uh, would like to replicate his birdie birdie finish in the first round. Remember, he finished birdie 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 in fact, and uh, if he can repeat birdies at 17 and 18, he'll wrest the title from Jansen. Well, if he can make par here, Roger, he's got an excellent chance to birdie 18, he really does. So the key 
part of the ingredient is to get this thing somewhere on the green, get your two putt par, which is like a birdie, and then go ahead about the business of knocking it stiff on 18 and making the putt. Well, this is very similar to the first round when he did make a birdie here from the intermediate cut of rough, has 206 yards to the hole. We'll try to run it up the ramp in front of the green. See the hole location right there. Hit this ball low. It's going at the left side of the gap and it's trying to climb. That's a really a good golf shot right there. Gorgeous golf swing there, Roger. Just gorgeous. The final moments of this 98th U.S. Open Championship. Payne Stewart still with hopes. Lee Jansen looks back. Even par for the championship. Leading by one as he goes to sign a scorecard of brilliance today. Twenty-five years ago, my partner Johnny Miller at Oakmont signed uh, that record card of 63, and boy, the relief that that part is over. But who knows? He may have 18 holes to play tomorrow as well. Yeah, Arnie was on the 12th hole. He thought he was leading on 11 when I posted my score, and he's got now about 25-minute uh, wait to see whether there's going to be a playoff tomorrow or whether he's going to pick up that silver cup and put his name on it the second time, which is an elite company. Or if Payne Stewart will rally with two to play and win it outright himself. That's possible. You could hold it out on the second shot at 18. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, Payne has a pretty good lie. He's just about 12 feet off the front of the green. And I guess the decision is whether to putt it or chip it. I would think as good a chipper as Payne is, he's one of the best I've ever seen. If he's thinking of making three, he'll chip it. If he's trying to make four, he'll putt it. Tom Lehman's away. Missed his second shot to the right, down in the area where the gallery has trampled the rough, and he's got some limbs between himself at the hole, so. And really about the only shot he has is to hit something low and just jam it into the hill and hope it'll climb through this rough. Another punishing day for Lehman. Not a single birdie on his card. He's three over. through the green and mm. a little distracting because he will still be away and make Payne wait that much longer to play his third. So let's go ahead to 18 and Bob Tway from his second shot. First cut of intermediate rough. He's got a downhill lie, 140 to the hole. Currently plus four. Needs to get up. You know, you watch everybody else besides Lee Jansen, and you realize how tough a golf course this is, and especially the pressure. But Lee just waltzed right through all these holes, just like it was no big deal. But it's, you got to give him a lot of credit for the great ball striking effort. Layman's fourth shot now at 17. It's tough, boy, when your nerves are jangling, and you got it sort of almost like icing a guy when he's at the free throw line with a couple timeouts. Put left for bogey for Lehman. Uh, Roger, this little pitch shot can get away from you to the right if you get a little aggressive. It can in the area of the hole, uh, just right of the hole. It starts falling away pretty good to the right side. But as I said earlier, Payne is one of the best chippers I've ever seen at the golf ball, and especially with his sand iron. I think he is. And you can you can see folks on the horizon. Look at this horizon. You see that fall there? That is a tremendous fall on the back of the green. And this shot here, if you get it going right, it'll just keep keep moving right. 
and this tight lie under pressure when your nerves are like I are saying a little bit jittery this is not an easy way to chip but he's very good like Roger said off his right foot great shot that's a super shot huh Roger it certainly is right underneath the hole just an easy tap in try to get your three at 18 John I think you're right. I think he was going for that. I really do. He was do thinking, too. I'm going to make this and birdie 18. He chips in more balls than anybody I've ever seen. He keeps it left. That was the key ingredient there. He played it four feet left of the hole. Now Lehman for his bogey five. And this is the first hole. I think we've seen a certain resignation from Tom Lehman. Tom double 17 to go to plus six. Well, Roger, he's putting himself in the same position Jack Fleck put himself in. In 1955, not many men have ever buried the final hole to put themselves in a playoff, but it happened here at Olympic Club, and it um, could happen again. Yeah. Courageous four there. Now Payne Stewart walks to 18. We'll need a birdie to force an 18-hole playoff tomorrow, and here are the facts today at 18. Only seven men have birdied 18, no one in the final 15 groups. So he's going to have to dig for something special to force the playoff. Where's your oh my? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that pitch in on the second shot. Well, there it is, you're looking at the Tremendous crowd here at 18. This green, a tiny little green. It's only about 30 feet across. It's one of the narrowest greens you've ever seen. It was a very uphill second shot, a blind tee shot. Payne will probably be going with a three or four iron off the tee, which will leave him about 100 yards for a second shot and a wedge. So you have to ask yourself, can I get it up and in with a wedge for the United States Open? We'll soon find out. There has been one eagle here at 18 in the championship, Lee Porter in the second round. We'll share that with you as part of our final memories after this championship is decided. And Payne's had trouble with this hole, Roger. He uh, hit it right when he birdied it in the first round. He's hit it left a couple times. Uh, he has not routine this tee shot, if I'm not uh, incorrect. He has not hit this fairway in the championship, John. You're right, and it's surprising. Just an iron shot, chase it down the fairway, but he has struggled. So first things first, uh, Roger, you gotta, to give yourself a chance, be nice to be in the short grass. I would think at this point that is a must. Birdie in the first round, but as I said, it was a miracle from the heavy rough on the right. Shot headed down the left side of the fairway. Needs a bounce right. He gets it. That'll be fine now, but he flirted with the left rough. See if he stays out of those divots again. Okay, Roger. Well, as Payne Stewart watches Lehman and then thinks about his second shot and the fact he needs to get down in two from where he now rests to tie this man, Lee Jansen, who joins us now. Will be a distraction, if nothing else, for you, Lee, as uh, we wait for the final shots from Payne Stewart. What a round, congratulations. Thank you. Lee, well, unbelievable. You make the curling putt at number four, right? And then you hit the drive. Tell us about the, well, the whole interaction on number four. Number uh, Take four. a look at this package here. He's gonna show you four and talk about that one. Okay, um, well, I got off to a bad start, but at number four, um, I watched Steve, Steve's putt and it broke quite a bit and um, and I just tried to see how far out I could play it and, and imagine where it would roll and uh, I just played it way out there and, and that time I hit it at the perfect speed and curled it in there it was a, it was a great time to make a putt but here you were in the trees yeah it hit the tree 
we started off the tee, and uh, as we got near the ball, the marshals didn't seem to know where it was. And uh, as we got closer to the area, one somebody from the other side of the fairway, someone from the other side of the fairway, <laughs> I'm not keeping up fast enough, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, the ball was stuck in the tree for a little while, and it finally fell out. Instead of a penalty, you wind up chipping in for your par, and yeah, the seventh so, is birdie putt. Right. And, uh, you know, that chip in for par, it was looking like double or more, so that, that turned the whole day around. I need to make a bogey after that. And at the 11th, your second shot. You didn't see this bounce probably up close. Oh, I saw that it landed <laughs> on the left. Wow, it landed way up there, didn't it? <laughs> that uh, was a key uh, bounce right there. Yeah, I had a 7 iron and went to a 6 because the wind picked up and tried to draw it against the wind. And You like these right to left putts today, huh? Yeah, yeah that, that was when I started thinking about that I was in the hunt right there when I made that. Yeah. So I was fine up until that the whole week. At 13? Uh, this was a very nice 5 iron. I uh, hit that as good as I could. Tried to land about 12 steps on the green. Knew the green was hard and it would run back there. And I figured even if it was short, I'd have a 20 footer and the hole's the same size from there. That was the birdie that got you even. And now you had pulled into a tie with Payne Stewart. Yes, and here we are on my favorite hole in the course. <laughs> bogey, double bogey, double bogey. Did that go through your mind again? Oh, I wanted that hole today. You know, <laughs> I didn't want to have to say that was the hole that undid me because I parted today, and I know I didn't do well in the first three days. What was I, what I was your through. goal on that second shot, Lee? Uh, well, I had about the same yardage to the front today as I did to the pin yesterday, so I thought it's the same club. So I hit three iron. I thought if it landed just a hair short, it would could bounce up onto the green and. Uh, yeah, there I said, give it a lucky bounce, and I knew it was enough to carry near the front. And when I first saw it bounce left, I thought it stopped on the front of the green, which would have been great. But as it was, I, I made a great two-putt from where I was. And for your par, and then at 18, with your father Larry watching, this for par? Yeah. Believe me, that might not have looked like a long putt, but it, was, uh, it couldn't have been any longer. <laughs> Pretty good Father's Day present there, Lee. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been quite a day, and um, I think the USGA because it does right by having 18 hole playoffs because I couldn't play another Did hole. Did you have a, a premonition anywhere in there that maybe it was going to be your day? Um, well, I, I was optimistic the whole year. You know, you, you can't help but think maybe this year, maybe this year. And, uh, um, you know, I, I love the golf course. I think it's one of the finest strategy, shot-making, challenging courses we play. And, and uh, I, I don't know, I just didn't think I was out of it going to the day. Well, it's, it's not that hard to shoot a couple over on this course. And I, put, I played really well yesterday. I knew I could shoot under par. We'll let you and Beverly watch Payne Stewart and Lehman here on 18. Pitching wedge, 111 yards. Well, it's not going to show Payne Stewart a lot with that shot, but what do you think, Roger? What's he got? Got 103 yards, John, which is a little bit of a choke down pitching wedge just a little too far for the sand iron. Yep. He's going with 105. Whole location's right there. Just to the right of that. looks pretty good if, if it'll spin back. See if it hangs up or comes back. Got an awful lot of fans pulling for it to come back. He leaves himself a very interesting putt. So that putt left for a birdie that would tie Lee Jansen for the championship and force tomorrow an 18-hole playoff. Well, Johnny, you've made that or, or tried to make that putt uh, hundreds of times in playing here as a kid. Uh, what will it do? Well, when I played it as a kid, it was running more like about an 8 on the stem meter. Now it's running a 12, so a little bit different there. It's an unusual hole location. It's a big right-to-left swinging putt. It's the kind of putt, to be honest with you, you might make one out of five times if you're not nervous. So I don't know where this is categorized, but a lot of it has to do with your will or whether you will that thing in. You're determined to make it. Now this gallery salutes Payne Stewart's effort in this 98th championship. Our statistic is that only seven 
players today out of 60 have one putted from above the hole. So this hole's playing much tougher than it appears. Not that many birdies today on uh, number 18. Seven. Layman is away. Well, Tom Lehman had, uh, of course, hoping that the fourth time was a charm, being in the final group, and just got off to that bad start, didn't he, Dick? It just, uh, right out of the blocks, he three putts, number one for a six, and uh, of all the things he ever thought of, he never thought he was gonna block his drive way into the trees, and then uh, end up making six there, and uh, never really recovered, I didn't think, and... Um, Not a single birdie today for Lehman. That, uh is hard to believe. So many people were pulling for him. He's a fine gentleman, a, a real, just a really popular guy to pull for. He never complains, really. And uh, maybe next year, who knows. But this putt, uh, of course, you've got to throw it way over into the right side of your screen there and then let it trickle left. And Lee Jansen, I'm sure, is breathing cotton balls about right now, but um, great position to be in. should learn something a little bit about the pace of this putt. It's a uh, it'll show once it turns left how quick it is. You're going to have to hit it way out in this area here. Darn near an impossible putt unless you ram it to make anyway. So that for his par that would tie him for fifth with Steve Stricker. I might think about putting out. That's what I'd do. I'd uh, clean it up. But... but he's not doing that. Haynes Stewart's father, Bill, in 1955, the year Fleck beat Hogan in an upset in the playoffs, played in the U.S. Open. Not that side. Go the other side. 43 years ago, two years before Payne Stewart was born. He taught Stewart the game. He coached him right into college at SMU. Well, I'll tell you, he's been courageous, really, the whole week. He made so many clutch putts because he only hit 50% of the fairways. So to be in this position, to be in a playoff of the U.S. Open hitting half the fairways, is really incredible. There's no doubt about it. Just incredible stuff. He just really hung in there and um, wouldn't surprise me if he rolled it in. He's got to throw it out there depending on how hard he hits it. You can see the caddy point and way out into the right there. And um, now he just got to go do it. Got to visualize it and let it go. For the Jansons. <laughs> Lee Jansen is the 1998 U.S. Open champion. He earned it. Fantastic playing by Lee Jansen and a great try by Payne Stewart. Just need a little more pace on it. And Stewart, who led by four at the start. Five ahead of Jansen. Nice 74. The second one is a lot more sweeter sometimes. You really appreciate it. The first time sometimes can fall on your lap, but that second one, you know how big it is. And same with Payne. He probably figured it was his early in the round. It looked like it was all Payne. And of course, the tears flow freer when your wife's right there enjoying it with you. Well, he's able to share with the entire family, father, son, wife. Well, 
Well, there'll be another year for Lehman. 75 today. Finishes tied for fifth with Steve Stricker. So it's Jansen, Stewart, Tway, Price, Stricker, and Lehman for fifth. And par indeed was a very good score for the championship. A lot of people talked about it, looked at this course at par 70 and said the 280 is a magnificent score with five, six inches of rye rough, small hard greens, open pressure, and this old course held up beautifully. The average score was about, for the field was about 16 over par for four rounds. And then you think about all the delicate shot making and yet luck played its role as well. If, what if Stewart's ball hadn't landed in a divot? What if Lee Jansen's ball had stayed in the tree? And you have to factor that all in. Yep, that's true. Let's look at Stewart's putt again, how close he was to a playoff. He hit a pretty good putt. Looked like he hit it a little bit on the toe when he came into it for some reason. Uh, my eye picked up that uh, that's a pretty solid putt. Threw it out there nicely, just looking good right there, looking good, and just needed a little more pace. So he struck it right where he wanted, didn't push it or pull it, hit a good putt. Doesn't have to feel bad about that one. With that, uh, the Jansons knew their name would again be etched <laughs> on that silver cup. Wow. And Father. And the son is here as well. Just got it. Oh my. Labor. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> well, we're going to have the presentation. It's an emotional day. <laughs> this Father's Day in San Francisco. Lee Jansen is the champion. We'll be back. Trophy presentation. We'll have our final thoughts as well. A magnificent championship is concluded. And a man called on his very best game to earn this title. Lee Jansen, the 98th U.S. Open champion. So here's the 98th U.S. Open leaderboard, and remember, plus nine or better, return to Pinehurst next year for the 99th U.S. Open Championship. Won by Lee Jansen, and the plus nine goes down to include Paul Azinger with a sizzling 65 today, the best round of the championship, and Matt Kuchar at plus nine. He qualifies for next year's U.S. Open along with Jim Fury. And now time for the trophy presentation. He grew up dreaming of being the next Brooks Robinson as a Baltimore Oriole fan. But baseball would not be his game. And very emotional as he was when he won uh, in 1993, Lee Chanson. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the champ United Open in 1988, Mr. Lee Jan. Well, Lee, 
sometimes a championship of this magnitude is even sweeter the second time you are overcome with emotion. Yes, uh, I think everyone would recall that I was the same way last time and <laughs> can't help myself. What about your resolve today? Bogeying two of the first three holes at that point, you were seven shots behind Payne Stewart. What was your mindset then? Well, uh, I felt, you know, I hit a bad shot on three, but I felt a little unlucky on the second hole. And then uh, I just really had to, to suck it up and, you know, go on it. You know, even if I couldn't win, I just knew that if I gave up there, I'd be really upset with myself. So I just had to go out and play well and be proud of myself. Uh, at, at that point, I didn't think I could win, but you know, after the birdie on four, I felt much better, and uh, you know, I didn't give away a shot the rest of the day, and uh, I just thought if I could get within a couple shots on the last few holes, that that I could do it, and uh, you know, somehow I did it. <laughs> you did indeed. Lee, you've won other titles, but it seems like all the ones you do manage to win, they come on very, very difficult courses. What is it about you in tough, tough courses? I think that, you know, if, you get, if you're fortunate enough to have success on a really tough course early, that just makes you feel good about it every time you play a tough course. Uh, obviously, every U.S. Home course is going to be tough. It was a dream to win the U.S. Open. There's not a day that has gone by that I haven't thought about winning it again. And now you join an elite group that has won it, multiple winners. Earlier this year, Lee, you were in position to win another big championship, the Players' Championship. You shot a 79 in the final round. You were very dejected, looking down in the fairway as you completed your round. There's been other opportunities this year where you have shot a big number. Did you ever doubt yourself this year? And how do you muster it all to come here and win this championship? Well, it's, it's been a while since I've won. So the longer you go without winning, the more you start thinking, can I win? Will I win? But you just have to tell yourself, yes, I will win. Whenever it is, it will erase all the bad Sundays, all the missed cuts, all the bad shots. And uh, you know, that was the one thing that uh, kept me going after the Players' Championship, shooting 79 last day. That's no fun, but I knew all I had to do was win one tournament. I'd forget about it. You talk about great Sundays. To win this on Father's Day, your family's here. Larry, your father's here, your wife, Beverly, your son, Connor. What kind of emotions went through your mind on the golf course with them out there watching you pull this one out? Well, yeah, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Uh, I, got a, I got a great crew. I've got all kinds of friends here this week. Um, you know, the family and the friends. I've got great supporters. I, I'm truly lucky to have the friends I have. And uh, I'm just happy they're here. And even the ones who aren't here, I knew they're watching today and pulling for me. Also, I, I received an incredible amount of support this week. All week, starting on Monday, I, I was really amazed how often people shot up from the galleries that they were rooting for me and they hoped I played well. And I'd really like to thank them. Finally, Lee, any words for Payne Stewart? He held the weight of this championship, the lead, for a long, long time and uh, fought you gallantly all the way to the final hole, just missing a birdie opportunity that would have forced a playoff. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he led the tournament the whole way, and he played great. He slept on the lead every night. And uh, I know how hard that is to sleep on that lead and uh, play the golf he played. He's got some courage, and he really deserves something. I know he's not going to take the trophy home tonight, but he deserves it. He's a great, he's a great champion, whether he won today or not. Congratulations, Lee Jansen. Open champion for the second time. Now let's go over to Roger Malpe. Roger. Thank you, Dan. Payne, I know this has to hurt. Uh, out with a lead for three days. And you said it last night. If I go out and make some bogeys and don't play the kind of golf that Payne Stewart can play, I can be caught. Well, that's right, Roger. And I, I, I didn't go out and do what it, it took to win the, the golf tournament today. I made too many bogeys. I, I didn't hit enough fairways, didn't hit enough greens. So. S scrambled pretty well, <laughs> but it, it just came up one shot. I mean, Ed, Roger, the credit's got to be given to Lee, though. I mean, he goes out in third to last group today and shoots two under par. That's, you know, that that's some great golf on this golf course today. He's got to be given a lot of credit for the way he played. 
As you leave Olympic Club, though, do you feel that it was yours to win and gave it away, or do you think you just got beat by an outstanding round of golf? Well, two, two ways, Roger. I, I didn't play good enough to win today, and I got beat by an outstanding round of golf. Good luck to you. Thank you. Back to you. Well, the, uh, sharing the wealth in professional golf, this is 15 consecutive major championships with 15 different winners. And a man who still is looking for that first U.S. Open championship uh, will have to set his sights on Pinehurst in 1999, and he's with Mark. Tom, I know you're bitterly disappointed, but uh, things started going wrong right at the uh, first hole. Yeah, they did. For, uh, first hole of the day, that three putt was a tough way to start, and uh, just the momentum never never got going in our group. Uh, neither Payne nor myself ever got any kind of flow going, and you know, just seemed like a lot of tee shots are ending up in the first cut of rough, and you know, just just one of those kinds of days, and um, it was very frustrating. You said earlier in the week the golf course didn't set up well for you. Did you kind of feel like you were going to have to fight it in order to play really well today? Well, you know, you know, I'm getting better at cutting the ball, and, and I feel like I hit some good shots today, but just consistently to hit the ball left or right is difficult for me. And, uh, you know, I hit it in the rough on 10, and, you know, I thought I had to go on 14 up in the first cup, you know, down the left side. It was just uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, but even still, I should have played better. As you look forward to Pinehurst, any thoughts right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I played awfully well, and uh, I'm really disappointed. I'm happy for Lee. You know, Lee. I uh, played very well, uh, but I'm disappointed because I know that I was, you know, right there knocking it one over, you know, a solid round today would have, you know, could have been a big victory for me, but, uh, you know, I'll think about it after a while. I'm sure there's going to be a U.S. Open trophy in your case before it's all over. Wow, I sure hope you're right, Mark. All right, back to you, Dick. All right, thank you, Mark. Well, there were a lot of wonderful stories this past week and great pictures and great shots, and there are two men who help uh, make it exciting for everyone. Lee Jansen, the winner, Matt Kuchar, the top amateur. Uh, it was a big comeback, five shots. Uh, only two others were greater. Arnold Palmer was seven back in 60 when he won, and you were six back in 73 with your victory. Well, you know, you have to have a little bit of luck, but the bottom line is uh, you got to shoot a great score, and he did. Uh, Jansen shooting 68 after being two over after three holes is amazing because this course really was the super champ. Not one player in red figures at the end of it all. Uh, Jansen should be commended. He played all those clutch holes coming in, super pressure and fairway, green, two putt or one putt every time and just made it look easy. And I'll tell you, not many guys can do that. We talked about the uh, vegetation here, the big trees. They cut down a limb. There were 105 <laughs> balls in it uh, a while back, and his ball didn't stay up there. There for a while, didn't... Uh, connect and that allowed him to win the championship. Unbelievable. The ball's up in the trees and looks like he's got to head back to the tee and out it drops on the thing, gets it in play, knocks it over the green and chips it in for one of the greatest fours maybe in history of golf. Well, San Francisco was a great sight and it produced Join some me. virtuoso golf the by the I'm world's silent. very best. For the vice chairman of the United States. The Olympic Club did send out an early message in its trees. Some proudly tall and straight, others twisted and turned. That was an early clue. Olympic would not be an ordinary experience. After all, this trial was to find the national champion. And it argued against the greatest of pleas. Those trees did taunt. Its greens tantalized. and it's rough, tied, and tackled. Bunkers discharged major champions. Yes, it did torment the world's greatest players. Olympics Lake course, so rugged, yet so neat. In fact, manicured to a blade so that only sage legends could overcome her wonderfully devious intent. Oh yes, Olympic demanded results and to our delight the game's best replied with masterful strokes.
Yes, it was some championship. What a day for Matt Kuchar celebrating his 20th birthday at the Open on Father's Day with his dad close by. Isn't that the way it should be? It's a grand coincidence that each year the U.S. Open Championship is determined on Father's Day. And what better gift than for young sons to see firsthand how good a father is. To confirm what perhaps he already knows, that whether inside or outside the ropes, dad's a champion. Many dads, like Payne Stewart's late father, are remembered every time they step on a practice tee. Lee Jansen's father, Larry, continued to encourage Lee's growth in golf today as he cheered his son produce a seven-shot comeback. What a day, a son's day, a father's day, a day to be national champion. bid you goodbye from the 98th U.S. Open Championship. And congratulations to 33-year-old Lee Jansen, twice America's national champ.